Radio Play Comics is meant to adapt the stories mostly of great unadapted old and forgotten comics from the past. I use voice acting and narration to abridge the work as much as possible without lessening its impact and to bring these stories to life the best way I can. Please enjoy. Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to the Fusion Space for today's episode of Radio Play Comics, Batman, No Man's Land, Part 2. For those who perhaps saw the first part some time before this, here's a recap of Part 1. Following a huge earthquake, Gotham was declared a federal no man's land, and many stayed behind to fight over what remained. Jim Gordon and the GCPD became the Blue Boys, and had started taking back the city from the south end, fighting back the street gangs. A new Batgirl, secretly the Huntress, had begun tagging and claiming territory as well, aided by Batman once he returned, three months into No Man's Land. They have taken neighborhoods from villains such as Scarface and Black Mask, while the Penguin rules his district from a marketplace, and Batman has forced him into a deal of information for protection. Jim Gordon felt that Batman had betrayed him and Gotham City by vanishing for three months following the government's edict, while Gotham fell into its own dark age, and he had warned him through Batgirl to stay away, preferring to be self-reliant. Huntress, as Batgirl, eventually failed Batman, though, failed to be able to follow his path, leading to the deaths of some of their soldiers to Two-Face, after which Huntress gave up the mask and assumed her old identity. In the meantime, Gordon had forged a secret alliance with Two-Face, and he had provided the GCPD with territory, slaughtering all who held it and leaving the Blue Boys tag. But Two-Face has already sent one killer after Gordon as well. Batman stopped the assassin David Kane with the help of his estranged and silent daughter Cassandra Kane, who only speaks the language of violence, and whom Batman then adopted as the new Batgirl. In the final issue of Part 1, Batman showed up at Jim's house to talk, and was punched in the face for his trouble. Batman told Jim that Two-Face wasn't an ally he could trust, and disappeared into the night once again. Jim said that apparently Batman wasn't either. And that about sums it up for Part 1. Of course, I encourage you to watch it before this part, and both parts before the final part, Part 3, as it is all one story meant to be taken in all at once when it's finished providing an overview of the over-a-year-long event and its essential main story. Now, on to part two. And, after the earth shattered and the buildings crumbled, the nation abandoned Gotham City. Then, only the valiant, the venal, and the insane remained in the place they called No Man's Land. Fruit of the Earth, Part 1. No Man's Land, Day 23. A plaque on a stone column reads, Robinson Park, North Gate. This is your park. Please keep it beautiful. Clayface tears the gate out of the wall. <laughs> He stalks into the park, and a few children dressed in leaves run from him deeper in. He asks the children, Where is she? Clayface chases after the children, smashing his fists into the ground shaped as hammers. <laughs> Gonna get you! You'll talk! The children run into a green area amidst the snow and dive into a wall of vines. I've got you. And now you know what happened, you little brats. Ugly Clayface melts you to goo if you don't tell. Enough! I knew you were here. Got a great deal for you. Show yourself. We can talk. Poison Ivy appears from the greenery, cradling the children protectively in her vines. I have no interest in your deals. No interest in you, in any of you on the outside. This park, this is Gotham now. Its future reclaimed by nature. Pure, without mankind's assault. It is a sanctuary now, and I am guardian. I will not let it be defiled. Not by anyone. Certainly not by you. Leave. We got a chance here to be rich, Ivy. The key is produce, sweetheart. Fresh fruit. Fresh vegetables. In another month, everyone in this town is going to be suffering from scurvy and rickets. All those fun diseases you get when you don't do like Mama says. When you don't eat your fruits and veggies. Everyone but you and me, that is. 
Clayface stabbed an apple with a spiked finger. We're not meat, are we? No, we're more. Figured you grow it, your brats harvest the crop, and I handle distribution. What do you say, gorgeous? Hmm, let's seal the deal with a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Clayface overwhelms her. No Man's Land, Day 189. Batman and Robin confer with Oracle in her clock tower. Assumed it was Penguin's doing. That somehow he'd worked an agreement with Ivy for freshies from the park. You could ask him, you know. No. Anything more? Vanessa, one of my agents, gave me a report way back on day 10 about kids being seen in the park. Kids? Yeah. No idea what they were doing. And I didn't want her entering the park to follow up. So you dropped it? Yes. And that's all I've got on the park. Robin and I will go in tonight. Is it me, or has the chip gotten bigger? The one on his shoulder, you mean? Yeah, it's gotten bigger. Hmm, thought so. In his lair, Penguin has his leg recently shot with a crossbow by Huntress's Batgirl, tended to. Gently, my dear, gently. I've had quite enough pain from that wound already. Sorry, Mr. Cobblepot. There's a dear. Hey, you can't... <laughs> Mr. Cobblepot, sir! Batman! Yes, I can hear that. Let him in already, you fool! Very good, sir. Batman kicks through the door, knocking the guard down. <laughs> Just the person I didn't want to see. Poison Ivy, tell me. I have no idea what you mean, dear chap. Batman picked up a fruit from Penguin's table. This is a royal ecree pear, considered the finest in the world. You know me, old fellow? Only the best. It's out of season, unique to Eastern Europe. Batman grabs Penguin by his collar, with the exception of a single E. Cree tree in the Robinson Park Botanical Garden, and lifts him out of his chair. This hurts. I hear she's using kids. Hurts quite a lot, actually. I'm losing patience. Batman drops him. <laughs> not, not to my knowledge. Then how? Clayface arranged it. The thespian version, in case you're wondering. He's been making the deliveries. That's all I know. And for this, Clayface gets what? Money. An account in Grand Cayman that has grown in the last several months. Batman leaves through the window. <sighs> Clive, cancel the last transfer to credit Grand Cayman. Yes, Mr. Cobblepot. Oh, and Clive? Sir? Penguin takes a bite of his pear. <sighs> you're fired. The Blue Boys confront a group of hostage-takers. Our terms! We want the return of Black Mask! Told you already, dead meat. That ain't gonna happen. Get ready to take him down. We can still negotiate. Shut up, Montoya! Negotiations make me sick. This is your last chance. Let the hostages go, and no one gets hurt. Petite aims his gun. On my mark. Hold it! Nobody is going to shoot anybody until I say so. Jim, this is a hostage situation. You can't compromise my leadership in the field. I sure as hell can. Mm. Petit turns his weapon to full auto and unloads the clip on the hostage takers and their hostages. <laughs> hmm. Petit looks satisfied while the blue boys behind him react with shock. Uh. Uh. Bullock reaches for Gordon, who pulls his gun and aims it at Petit. Animal! Harvey grabs him. Oh, no, Commish, not like this. You're too weak for the no-man's land, Jim. Rene takes hold of Petite's gun. You're all too weak. You'll never survive. He backhands her away. <laughs> Don't ever touch my weapon again, woman. Petite hoists his weapon high into the air. This is the only diplomacy left. This is the only order. We've been deluding ourselves. We've been afraid to go all the way. Well, I'm not afraid anymore. You can stick with Jimmy. His useless morality and outmoded ethics. You can stick with him and lose. Or you can come with me and win. Come with me and we'll rebuild Gotham ourselves. Bullock and Montoya stand with Gordon, but Bach and many others side with Petite as the two leaders stare each other down. Petite and his new acolytes leave. Batman and Robin enter Robinson Park through a tangle of vines. 
Tell me again what we're after? Gotham's insurance. Of course. And that would be what exactly? Huh. Don't mind me. I'm just a sidekick. Bring a machete? The vines creak and move to create an open path. You do that? No. Ivy, she's letting us in. She knows we're here? Yes. Batman finds a statue with plants filling his mouth. Emperor Nero, they say he played the fiddle while Rome burned. How appropriate. Don't mistake Gotham's fall for Rome's, Robin. He lights a torch and burns the mouth free of obstruction. Beep. What are you doing? Unlocking the door. It triggers a hidden switch within the statue. <laughs> Batman pushes the statue back to reveal a hole. Caligula means little boots in Latin. He wanted to be a soldier. He also made his horse proconsul or something like that, right? They drop into an underground vault. <laughs> you knew this was here? I built it. Lights. Beep. <laughs> the lights come on. You built this? Well... Had it built. What did you think I was doing all the time I was gone? Resting? Uh, well, no. Not exactly. While Dick took over, I had caves constructed all across the city. Insurance, like I said. But who built... Later. Batman opens a round metal hatch in the wall. <clears throat> Holy... Poison Ivy is within, trapped in a column of clay, and her children work while wearing clay shackles. Ivy? I knew you'd come, lover. I just hope you're not too late. Fruit of the Earth, Part 2 I knew you'd come. I knew. Robin, the kids. On it. It's not what you think. Robin frees the children. Gonna be fine now. You can't leave her. Explain it. Fast. They were abandoned on Black Monday. I cared for them. What happened? Clayface. He captured us, put us here. He tells me what to grow. He makes the children harvest the crop. He keeps me weak, not enough sun, barely enough water. He feeds me salt, Batman. Do you know what salt does to a plant? But now you're here, and now you'll help me. You see... I found this place before Clayface arrived. Your place. An honor to goodness Batcave secret hideout full of all sorts of neat things. Computers, equipment, plastic, poisonous little boy toys. This? Ivy shows Batman a locked strong box. What's inside, Bats? I can't seem to get it open. Enough. What do you want for it? Free us. Help me destroy Clayface, then leave the park. She wraps the box in more vines. And never come back. Then you can have your box and whatever it contains. Promise. I can't leave these children with you. Why not? Who else will take care of them? You? You're running out of time, Batman. I can feel every footstep on the grass above us. Clayface is coming back. He'll be here by dawn. Hmm. Get the kid to safety. Go, Rose. It's all right. You heard the lady. What are you going to do? Get some mud on my boots. Robin takes the kids outside. Alone at last. Insults me? Ignores? Humiliates? Refuses me? Like I'm not even there? Fine. All bets are off. Like old Blue Eyes says, now we do it my way. Huntress resumes her old role, donning her old costume to face the night alone. For now. Superior tactics coupled with the technological edge. My men are the best of the Gotham Blue Boys. Gordon won't last a week without their muzzle. You're a tactical genius, Bill. Everybody knows that. But the edge. Don't interrupt me, Foley. Sorry. We're going to bring some law back to this town. You and me. We're going to make people listen. We're going to speak with authority. The kind that comes from the barrel of a gun. Petit shows Foley his store of ammunition. Bill, how, how much? I mean... I've got a bullet for every man, woman, and child in Gotham, Foley. Huntress appears above them. Oh, 
And all I've got for you is a piece of fiberglass with a sharpened titanium alloy head. She fires a crossbow bolt through Foley's legs. <laughs> Don't, Foley. You're not equipped. And he drops his gun. <laughs> you murdered four innocents today, Petite. You're going to pay for that. Innocents? You actually believe that crap? There is nothing innocent about those men. Any of them. They were raiders and true facers. They were murderers. Gordon's boys said. Exactly what Gordon wanted them to say. You know what that old man is like. He's too sentimental. Too soft for the NML. Not like us. Huntress jumps down to Petite's level. Why should I believe a thing you say? Because we're alike. Be careful what you say, Billy. I'm not a killer. And since when has a crossbow been non-lethal weaponry? No, you're not a killer, Huntress. Neither am I. What we are, we're soldiers. And soldiers fight in wars. And Gotham is at war. Hmm. Huntress smiles. And war is hell. Batman tries to free Ivy, but her column of clay is like concrete. Hmm. I fought Clayface after the quake. He nearly killed me. He's too powerful for me to take alone. I know. I have a plan. But you'll have to help me. And you'll have to do what I say. Of course. You know I will. No, I don't. But I don't have a choice. And Clayface is the greater threat right now. So tell me, what do you need to be strong again? What does any plant need? Meanwhile, the kids tell Robin that Ivy has been taking care of them since they were orphaned by the quick, providing them food and shelter as long as they respected the green. Things had been good there, until Clayface came. Batman radios him, and Robin retrieves explosives from a hidden compartment in a statue. Clayface returns to Ivy. Morning, honey. I'm home. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Where are the kids, honey? Where are our darlings? Our little cupcakes? A little slave labor force. Answer me, doll, or I'll salt your earth until you scream. Clayface touches Ivy's chin. Get your hands off her. You. I was hoping you'd stop by, actually. Like what I do with your place? Not particularly. Batman leaps at Clayface, swinging a metal pipe. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're not even trying. Don't disappoint me now. This is a big fight scene. A huge clay fist hits him. <laughs> Oof. Gonna kill you now. Gonna hurt you a lot. Batman dives to dodge a blast of clay. <laughs> Clayface grabs Batman's leg. Let him go. Aw, oh, don't be that way. Clay arms wrap around Batman. Think she likes you. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna build up a charge. Shock you. Mm -hmm. You talk too much. Batman hits Clayface in the back with a pipe, making him shock himself and getting free. <laughs> Robin. No. 10-4, good buddy. Robin detonates the explosives, blowing a hole in the roof of Ivy's chamber. <laughs> you suck! Water and sunlight both pour into the hole, and Ivy drinks them in. <sighs> Batman and Clayface rise out of the water and begin to fight. <sighs> Ivy arises as well, separating them. Alright, boys. Let's finish this. Finish it, Ivy. Finish it! Baby, we're just getting started! Clayface slams Batman into the wall with his pincer-shaped hand. <clears throat> Be with you after I kill this bat! Poison Ivy points at him. Six months! Trapped by you! Clayface runs a current through Batman. <clears throat> Abused! Ivy summons thorny vines from the earth. Tormented! Batman opens a pouch in his utility belt. Defiled! The current strengthens. <laughs> Polluted. Batman pulls out a capsule. You enslaved children. Ivy wraps the vines around her body like armor. Children I'd promised to protect. You enslaved me. And you abused the green. Now you're going to pay. Ivy approaches Clayface, ready for battle. Fruit of the Earth, Part 3. Batman slams a freezing capsule into Clayface's arm. Batman! Ivy swings a vine out to Batman and he grabs on. He gives Ivy his hand and they both rise up towards the hole in the chamber's roof. Hold on. Kill you both! Die! Precious greed! Burning! Batman and Ivy emerge on the surface. Robin, second charge. Bombs away! 
Ashes, yo! Robin drops more explosives in the hole. Bubble, skin, yo! Wait a minute. <laughs> How's it going? Clockwork. Where's Ivy? Blow me up! You can't blow me up! Clayface pulls himself up through the ground. You'll never stop screaming! Never! Clayface burns with energy as he drags himself free of the ground. Who's dying first? What? Ivy grabs Clayface with a tree, wrapping him in its branches. From me to you! Instantly, the branches pierce his body. <sighs> with all my love! What? what? <sighs> Ivy drops him on the ground, branches still protruding from his form. Can you feel that, honey? Clayface extends a hand to Ivy as he pleads with her. Uh, he help, help me. Your good soil, full of nutrients, full of minerals. But, but please. The roots like you. You're creating life. You're feeding all those plants growing inside you right now. Uh, 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 Ivy. Green leaves sprout from the branches holding Clayface down. Shh. They're going to use you up. No, 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 uh, I mean... Just like you tried to do to me. Like you tried to do to the children. b b, -b bat man help me. I offered you a kiss when you first came to my park, and you hit me instead. Ivy, I won't let you kill him. Batman grabs Ivy's shoulder. I've had enough of what you will or won't allow. You weren't held prisoner by this monster. You and your charges didn't suffer at his hands. She wraps Batman in vines, holding him in place. So keep out of it. Robin. The kids hold Robin back. No, leave her alone. She'll kill. No, she won't. We know her. Clayface becomes covered in greenery and begins sprouting flowers. Please. Please. Do you still want to kiss, lover? Don't make, make me be... I seem to remember begging the same thing of you. She kisses him, and Clayface freezes with a smile on his face, then crumbles away, becoming a grassy mound of earth. <sighs> it's unlikely this actually kills him, as few things are known that can. But at least for now, he is no threat. Ivy sets Batman free. <sighs> Batman glowers at Ivy. Hmm. But one of the children approaches him. It's better this way. He won't hurt anyone again. Do you know what today is, Batman? Batman looked at the fruit on a tree. The first day of summer. In his rooftop garden, Jim Gordon does the same to his tomatoes. Sir? One last time, Renee. Yes, sir. What am I asking him for this time? Nothing. You're telling him it's over. After all, the SOB did try to kill me. Consider it done, sir. Renee practically skips away in her gladness. A woman in white working for a mysterious employer courts Bane for a very special mission in Gotham. You're a hard man to track down. Columbia, of all places. Cartels always need work, Miss White. It is an intriguing offer to return to Gotham now of all times. The timing is critical. So you said. I am empowered to negotiate your fee. But of course, my dear. I would expect no less from your employer. My employer is very generous. He has power. He can afford to be. And what he wants, it will cost him. You can name your price, of course. I will, my dear. And he will pay it. Two-Face shows up in Gordon's garden. Did my little assassin hurt your feelings? We had a deal. Then you tried to kill me. It was a coin, that's all, Jim. Never know which side'll come up. It doesn't matter. We're through. Got that? No. I really like Renee. She and I share an understanding. You and I don't. We're not through, Jimmy. You still owe me for my help with Penguin. Harvey holds up Renee's badge. Where is she? Think of her as part of my... Payment. After all, I've got the rest of her family. Harvey tosses Gordon Renee's badge. You rotten! Jim charges at him. Jimmy, 
Tisk, tisk. You're lucky I didn't want to kill you myself. Harvey pulls a gun, then throws Gordon into the bushes. <laughs> She'll be safe with me. Don't worry. I'll be in touch. Be good. Gordon inspects the badge and finds blood on it. And if you were wondering if Harvey was bluffing, well, we won't see them until the final act of part two. But Two-Face has indeed found Renee's family several months ago and has been either keeping them prisoner or taking care of them ever since. It all depends on which of two ways you look at it. They want to stay with her. You're sure? They told me. I think they don't have anywhere else to go, Batman. Hmm. Ivy brings Batman his lockbox. Here it is. Don't be too disappointed. Batman opens it and dumps out pieces of computer disks. You destroyed them. Of course I destroyed them. I found the box before Clayface arrived. I knew it was yours. Those disks were plastic. Petroleum byproducts are poisonous to plants. What are we talking about? Later, Robin. Besides, I'm sure you backed up your files. Stored them somewhere off-site, perhaps? You used us. Not the way Clayface used me. And now what? Will you try to chain me up, too? Hmm. Here's the deal. You keep the park. Keep the order. Don't let anyone, Two-Face, Penguin, Freeze, any of them, take it over. Care for the children. Tuesdays and Fridays, you release produce to the city. Leave it at the south gate of the park. Grow only what the soil will stand. Grow only what will need. I'll arrange for distribution. You do these things... I'll leave you alone. Deal. Batman and Robin return to Oracle's clock tower. So they weren't there? They were there. Ivy destroyed them. Why? She likes to recycle. When are you going to tell me what they were, by the way? I mean, I know they were data of some sort. Robin reaches for the computer, and Oracle slaps him away. Hands yourself, Munchkin. But of what? Gotham. Meaning? That's all you need to know for now. Gee, thanks. You can go to the alternates, but they'll have to be retrieved. I want another option. We don't have another option. You have to contact her. It's not as simple as that. We'd have to trick her into doing what we need. I've already given that some thought, and I think I have a plan that could work. Boing! Boing! You gonna get that? Of Course not. Selena Kyle picks up her phone. Hello? It's Rizzo. I told you never to call me here. What you told me is to let you know any time I've seen something interesting go on display. <sighs> Make it quick. It's a cathead gen that makes the Hope Diamond look like a hunk of charcoal. Hmm. The King. I said drop it! Batman backhands a man holding a large hunting knife. <laughs> they call themselves Skinners. Urban Frontiersmen. Right wing. White collar. Former weekend survivalists. Pre-quake, they'd be fixing your taxes or your teeth. Now they're most likely to be wearing them. He was the last. This gang is defeated. Cannibals, always thinking with their stomachs. Their latest victim hangs from the ceiling, calling to Batman. Foul taunt! That was gonna have me guts for goddess! Quit posing, cut me down! The blood's rushing to me head! Shut up, Henry. Henry Streeter, British National. Wanted for global computer crime. Came to run a sting on Gotham's stock market the day before the quake. Bad timing. His luck's been running the same way ever since. Better make it sharpish. Looks like you've got a busy night. What? The bat signal lights up the sky. Hang on. What about me? Batman throws a batarang and cuts Henry down. <laughs> I'll be back for them. Don't be here. They may wake up hungry. I wouldn't dream of it. He vanishes into the night. Father, the generator. Gas is running low. Have faith, Jess. He's not coming. He's... Batman arrived at a makeshift bat signal on a rooftop. Salvaged automobile headlights connected to a gas generator. Clever. Now explain. Yay! He said you'd come. He did. And you have. Who? The king. The king of Gotham City. I know what you're thinking, Batman, but Jess is right. We need your help. Please, if you'll follow me, it'll be easier to explain. Below, the king. I've heard of him. 
a fresh urban legend sprung from the chaotic nightmare Gotham has become. They all go inside the building. He's a classic mythic archetype, a Robin Hood figure helping the weak, poor, and dispossessed. A shred of hope and decency in a world of anarchy. The king isn't a fable, Batman. He's as real as you or I. I know. I've met him. We all have. The fact is, most of us wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for him. You betcha! These children, they're all... They're handicapped. Some mentally, some physically. Waves and strays left behind in Gotham's exodus. I gathered up all I could find. But so many... I never knew. We don't advertise. The vulnerable don't last long here. We were dying on our feet when the king found us. Forgive my skepticism, father, but how do you know it was him? I don't, nor do I care. Children were dying every day. Bad food, bad water. My faith was sorely tested. Then he arrived with this. Batman tastes the substance in a package. Sugar, salt. Vitamins. Its rehydration powder prevents terminal fluid loss. It halved our mortality rate in a week. Now he supplies the raw materials, and we package them for him to distribute to others in need. He also taught us how to make these water filters, using just sand, gravel, and charcoal. Hmm. Ingenious. Clean water is life. We owe the king our lives. Not just us, but hundreds more in hiding across the city. Now he's vanished, and you want me to find him. He left that bat signal to use if he didn't return. So I could find him? No, so you'd watch over us. It's me who wants you to find him. He's a good man. I'll not desert him in his hour of need. You realize he could be dead? No, not him. His work isn't done yet. Hmm. I'll need a description. What does he look like? Ah, now there... We may have a problem. The king wears a mask with goggles and is currently being held hostage by two goons who followed him and ambushed him, knowing his value, and who plan to force him to work for them, making purified water to trade. As soon as he wakes up, that is. But before that can happen, Killer Croc bursts through the door. <laughs> None of the other communes and enclaves the king helped could give me a clear description of him. With highly bankable skills like his, protecting his identity would be paramount. But his trademarks were everywhere. Batman looks over all the advancements the King has made in this area. Catch pockets designed to trap and purify rainwater. Wind turbines used to recharge precious batteries. Chemical sprays to sterilize stagnant pools. Breeding grounds for mosquitoes and disease. These skills are not common. The king is most likely ex-military, special forces, or navy seal. He can scavenge some supplies, but he must also trade and barter. And that means only one place. In a large warehouse, the penguin takes stock. Bicycle tires, 96. Check. Thermal socks, 20 pairs. Check. Fish paste, jaws of, 2,000. Check. Dog pelts, 60 assorted. Check. Two pairs. One dozen. Check. Armor. One suitor. Check. All here so far. Batman mannequin. One? Hmm. I don't remember. Penguin. Ah! What? Are you trying to kill me? I need answers. Information. You recall our agreement? Too well. What do you want? The king of Gotham City. What do you know about him? He's a pain in the posterior. A do-gooder I'd be pleased to see done in. If I wasn't such a pillar of the community, of course. You believe he's real? I know so. His free medicines and fresh water are putting a pinch on my profits. Ah, ah, ah. Is that it? That's why you're here? Perhaps. But ask yourself this. Where did he get his specialist supplies? Where did he barter? Who would he go to? You mean he was here? In my establishment? Almost certainly. Your goods are the best, after all. Snatched from my grip, and I didn't even know it. Eh, uh, how ironic. Yes, indeed. Aha. Batman, I was wondering. I may have a little problem with staff pilfering. Do you think you could look into it for me? I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Hmm, Batman? Batman has disappeared. Wah! I hate it when he does that. 
Following Penguin's cue, I consult Oracle. She furnishes me with a selection of known water traders. Her leads are good, but I'm too late. It appears someone is intent on putting them all out of business, permanently. Batman finds all the water traders already dead and their store is destroyed. However, they can still answer some of my questions. It's just a matter of knowing which ones to ask. He finds the thugs who had the king. Scales under this poor devil's fingernails. Only one man has a hide like that, and I know where to find him. Batman arrives at Croc's lair and observes from a distance. Say it again. I want to hear you. Say it. Croc slaps the king around. <laughs> you, you, you kill a killer Croc, king of Gotham, top man, his highness, the king. That's right. You know how many men I killed to find you? How many necks I snapped? Skulls I crushed? Too, too, too many. Who said you could talk? You talk when I say. He picks the man up and throws him into a column. <laughs> He's out cold. Croc, go easy, man. Dude's worth his weight in gold. The magic he can work, we could write our own ticket in this town. That's so? Yeah. Let me write yours for you, Bobby. Croc lifts Bobby by the head and breaks his neck. Oh, man. It's red mist time again. Ah! Anyone else? Nope. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Batman sneaks up right behind them. No, he's not interested in acquisitions. His needs are more primal. To be the alpha male, top of the food chain, king of the hill. He sees the king as competition, wants his title. A rival to be challenged and killed. Not today. Concussion grenades just soften them up. What's that? The grenade explodes, stunning Croc's thugs. <laughs> ah! Batman rushes into them, punching one out and smashing his elbow into another's face before backhanding the third. <laughs> Batman! Croc! Let's go! Killer Croc wraps Batman in a bear hug. <sighs> Now this is more like it. He jerks his head back, hitting Croc in the nose. <clears throat> Croc tosses him away. <clears throat> Said this ain't the old days. This time, I'm putting you down for good. Batman ducks Croc's punch, which goes through the concrete wall behind him. <clears throat> he responds with a palm strike to the underside of Croc's chin. <clears throat> you fight. You fail. Seems like the old days to me. Followed with a perfectly timed kick to the face as he recovers. <sighs> Enough talk. You die. Batman dodges another wall-breaking punch. <sighs> he backfists Croc's jaw, but Croc slashes Batman across his chest with his claws. <sighs> Croc lands a punch, and Batman staggers back. <sighs> Here I come. Killer Croc leaps at Batman. <sighs> Batman plants his hands and catches Croc with his feet, carrying his dive forward and tossing him through the wall. There you go. <laughs> it's a four-floor drop. He's survived worse. Batman gets up. It'll just put another dent in his ego. Looking down, he sees the car Croc landed on, but no Croc. Still got some slick moves on you, Bat. You here to buzz Croc or me too? Demchazki? Stanley Demchazki? You're the king? Hey, I didn't pick the name. Some kid. They called me it and it stuck. I kinda like it. Well, until now. What's your angle? You're a career criminal. Why the Good Samaritan Act? Hey, it ain't no act. As for reason, well, I got old is what. I spent so much of my life in Blackgate I ought to own shares. I got out a couple of days before the quake. I didn't want to leave with the rest. Gotham's home, you know. Outside, I'd just be another ex-con, hustling, getting by. I'd got skills, trades. I read a lot inside, took courses. I'm a qualified plumber, electrician, carpenter, dog clipper, and more. I figured that'd be worth something. I could have made a bundle in here. Why didn't you? Have you seen this place? It's dog-eat-dog -dog and then some. I had no idea it'd get so bad. Life here is a world of hurt. When I stumbled across the priest and them kids, something inside me broke. I wanted to help, to put something back. 
Does that sound nuts? No, it doesn't. So, what do we do now? Batman brings the king back to his people. Father, I have someone I think you should meet. Batman? His name's Stanley Demchazki. He's a friend of mine. End. This Nightwing story, which details his mission to infiltrate and take back Blackgate Prison from the supervillain controlling it, takes place over the same two days as other stories in this event. As it is largely removed from the main plot, I will just provide a brief overview of most of it. The Belly of the Beast It's never been a model prison. Now it's hell on earth. And just like hell, it has its own lord of darkness. But for lockup, it's a heaven of his own design. An inescapable keep where he can incarcerate the worst Gotham has to offer. But I don't think it's a thirst for justice that drives Lyle Bolton to punish the wicked. It's something much darker. I almost feel sorry for anyone in Blackgate now. Almost. And you want me to go over there? Lockup served a purpose. He held Gotham's animals in a cage. Any order is desirable over chaos. I allowed him some power because it was convenient for me to do so. But he might just realize that he has an army imprisoned over there. But now his reign has to end. You have to take Blackgate back from him before he gets too powerful. Yeah. You know, I've got my own city to watch over now. And Bloodhaven hasn't gotten any nicer with a million Gothamites camped out down there. We clean up Gotham and they can come home. Don't hand me the big picture sermon, all right? Coming here costs me a lot. Your studies at the police academy. You know about that. Of course you do. You know everything. Well, being here has blown that for me. You'll get back in. You'll find a way. Like I'll find a way to take back a prison full of murderous psychopaths from a renegade control freak? I have confidence in you. And what will you be doing? There are forces at work. Outside forces that will take Gotham down a dangerous path. Worse than now? Gotham's cut off from the world. It was left to die. Didn't you just say any order is desirable over chaos? Take back, Blackgate. Contact me when it's done. Sure, I'll do that little thing. Nightwing infiltrates the prison underwater via its dock. Inside, he tries to secure information from a prisoner, but he runs away in fear of being taken back to no man's land. The guards soon find him, and Dick dodges the gunfire of the Trigger Twins, leaping through the cell block and swinging from the railings. He encounters the KG Beast, a leader of the guards, and slides between his legs to escape him. He runs back into the Twins, though, and dives back through the middle of the corridor to avoid the bullet ricochets which track along the floor and walls. Nightwing dodges his blade hand and swings the Beast into a wall. <laughs> then throws him at the trigger twin. <laughs> However, the master of the prison, the supervillain lockup, has found them, and he puts Dick down with a taser. <laughs> Nightwing awakens in a cell surrounded by criminals and supervillains, some of which he has helped put away. He leaps and bounds around the room, striking where he can and narrowly avoiding danger. <laughs> Finally, they are stopped by a voice of reason, saying that if he's here, then Batman has come to free the prison from lockup. Nightwing doesn't lie to them, though. He tells them he's here to do the job alone. Still, they agree to help him for their own benefit. Dick tells the prisoners they used to store cannonballs and gunpowder where they're being held, and gunpowder residue has collected in the very mortar in the walls. They set to work carefully collecting it to use as an explosive. Meanwhile, Lockup has sentenced them all to death, and to make good on that, he floods the lower level of the prison. <laughs> Nightwing barely gets the sack of explosive material to the correct wall in time. They blow a hole in the wall and escape the rush of water. <laughs> Nightwing speeds ahead, knowing that their gratitude towards him won't last. He climbs up a fight filled with hanging chains along its length. KG Beast hurtles down the pipe at him, and they fight in midair while hanging from the chain. Nightwing manages to toss the beast down as the other prisoners chasing him and get up the rest of the pipeway. <laughs> at the top, he dodges the gunfire of the Trigger Twins once again. <laughs> Dick hides among the crates and boxes, making his way to a forklift and toppling a stack of boxes onto Lockup and the Twins. <laughs> 
finally subduing them and winning back Blackgate Prison for the Blue Boys to take over. Dick has taken a lot of damage and he barely makes his way to Barbara Gordon's tower to rest and recover. Just like Nightwing's story, this Catwoman story takes place alongside other events in the same time period and is also largely unconnected with the mainland of Gotham, so it will also be briefly summarized except for a few important scenes with Batman. The Mission I've seen it. I want it. I must have it. And nothing is going to stand in my way. Catwoman avoids a laser grid as she lowers herself down to a jewel in a glass case. I was all set to steal my way back into Gotham when I heard about this little lovely back in Manhattan. It was begging me to take it. In the case is a gem the size of an apple shaped like a cat's head, labeled the Green Cat Gem, on loan from the Bruce Wayne collection. And the rest of my little sojourn in the Big Apple didn't quite go as I would have liked. I took over a big business and ran for mayor. I wound up with my assets frozen or confiscated and forced to assassinate myself. She attaches a grapple to the gem. Shh. I deserved, I needed a little bauble to prove my time here hadn't been completely wasted. A little something to remind me of who I was. Selina carefully pulled the jewel up to her. My, my, aren't you a pretty baby? The gem dissolves into a replica of Oracle's computer image. Hello, Catwoman. At least I assume, Mrs. Catwoman. This pre-recorded message is meant strictly for her. The boss needs you to meet him in Gotham. You should be at Robinson Central Station main lobby in 12 hours. If you don't show, it will be assumed that you couldn't get in. End of transmission. The gem dissolves entirely. Uh, I was on my way to Gotham anyway! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Rouse bargain alarms! Catwoman makes a hasty exit. Gotham City, or what's left of it. The bait's been swallowed. We can only assume by Catwoman. Timer's running. Are you so sure that she'll show? I know her psychology. She'll show. After that, who knows? She's a cat. This is Derek Johnson in News Chopper 86 reporting live. Selina dodges gunfire as she runs from the police. Stop where you are. Stop or we'll be forced to shoot. I'm going to kill him. I'm definitely going to kill the Batman. Dead, dead, dead. Catwoman jumps and whips the landing gear of a helicopter in flight. <gasps> dead, stone cold, dead. Not because he caused me to blow my cool. That was my fault. Not because I'm in this fix. Again, my bad. Not even because of that snide challenge. She swings up and into the news chopper. Huh. Ah. I need to kill him because he's pushing my buttons. And it's working. Hi, I'm Catwoman. You may have heard of me. I'm the one who pushed mayoral candidate Selena Kyle off a building. Now you'll take me where I want to go or I'll push you both out of this chopper. In the only tunnel left into Gotham, henchmen discuss the villains they've worked for, and they all agree they'd like to work for Catwoman. Selina plans her entry method from high on a bridge support. Just before dawn, she drives a boat toward Gotham, soon drawing the attention of a military copter on patrol. <laughs> At a certain point, the boat explodes. <laughs> and Catwoman tries to slip away underwater with a small personal motor. Mm. However, they see her trail of bubbles and are not fooled. They drop a team of underwater Navy SEALs at her location. <laughs> Selina hides in the wreckage and lets them pass her by, chasing her motor before swimming the other way towards Gotham's shore. She emerges, <laughs> and finally sees her city up close and personal. I've come home. Welcome home, Selina. Oh, baby, what has become of you? I'm on the opposite of Gotham from where I want to be, so I cut through the old Diamond District, happy hunting grounds of yore, and learn an earful in the process. The city is in chaos, and in some ways I find that quite appealing. Different factions responding to different bosses have taken over different sectors, and the balance keeps shifting back and forth. I cut up Schnapp Avenue, keeping mostly clear of the fun and games. 
I have an appointment to keep and a point to make. I am going to kill Batman stone dead. Robinson Central Station, the so-called crossroads of Gotham. I beat the clock. Now I want to beat the bat. Hello, Batman, Pookie. I got your message. I've come a long way. Let's not play games in the shadows, hmm? Batman drops down from the rafters. <sighs> Agreed. I have need of a thief. There are some computer disks that contain vital data for restoring Gotham. Why not get them yourself? They're in Manhattan. Ah! <laughs> you got me here from Manhattan just to tell me to go back to Manhattan? I really am going to kill you! Selina dives at Batman, who dodges. <laughs> I can't risk anyone else learning about those discs. The conversation had to be face to face. Also, I had to know whether or not you could get into Gotham. If you have the discs but can't get them to me, then you're no use to me. And why should I do anything that you want me to? She uncoils her whip at him. <laughs> it cracks around his arm. <laughs> Batman hauls Catwoman in close, taking her in his arms. Oh! I need you. He kisses her, and she kisses him back. Mm. <laughs> And? If I get what's on the discs, Gotham comes back to life again. Maybe. I can't do it by myself, Catwoman. I tried. I need others. For this, I need you. You're the only one I think can pull this off. The only one I can trust. Well, I wasn't planning on leaving so soon. I mean, I just got here. And if you need the disc quickly, it's going to be tough. Gotham is such a pain to bust in and out of. Unless, of course, you just happen to know an alternate route? There's a steam tunnel off the sewage treatment plant under the Gotham River to the shore. Hasn't been used in years and people have forgotten about it. It should be clear. I put together a packet of everything you'll need to know about where the discs are and who is guarding them. You can take it with you and study it in Manhattan. Meet me back here in 72 hours with the discs. Any later than that and it'll no longer matter. And good luck. Selina comes upon the henchmen in the tunnel. The henchmen fire at Catwoman, but she easily avoids their bullets and leaps over their heads. Just then, the largest henchmen explode the wall of crates right next to himself, flooding the tunnel with water and washing Selina and the others away. Great! I'm wet again! In the water-filled space, Selina grabs a hold of a hatch and the henchmen passing her by. Wordlessly, they agree to work together, and soon the hatch is opened, and they all watch out an exit pipe. <laughs> Catwoman threatens the henchmen and tells them they all work for her now, and they all agree, without much of a fuss. The large, dim henchman shows up as well, surprisingly uninjured, and happy to follow the kitty lady. Selina sets them all up in a fancy hotel and reviews the files Batman gave her. The discs are being held by a security company hired by Bruce Wayne called Hard Cases, Inc. She first hires some mercenaries to act as a diversion, then dresses in a business suit and poses as a customer seeking Hard Cases services and visits their building. While Selina hides inside the building, her hired mercs attack the roof and all the guards are summoned to fight them. A large figure in a cat suit accompanies the rooftop attack. <laughs> It's the large henchman in disguise as Catwoman, though, and loaded with explosives. <laughs> While he distracts the forces above, Catwoman finds Wayne's discs and whips them out of their case, soon making her escape. <laughs> the henchman meets Selina back at the hotel, angry that she's killed their friend, but Selina reveals that he's resting in the next room, perfectly fine. She had figured out that he had a metahuman power to let explosive force pass through himself only making him feel happy as a result, the reason he likes explosions. Selina makes a copy of the disc besides the set to deliver to Batman, which she plans to sell on the open market as compensation for her trouble, and to teach Batman a lesson about how he treats her. Gotham City I still can't believe you're trusting Catwoman. She just murdered someone in New York. If you check the autopsy of this Selina Kyle, you'll find the body was already a corpse when Catwoman threw it off the building dead at least two days. Then where is Selina Kyle? Two theories. One, she worked a deal with Catwoman to vanish. There were several contracts out on her life. 
Two, there is no Selena Kyle. Personal records are sketchy beyond a certain point. Well, Catwoman got the computer disk you sent her after, although she started a small war to do it. I thought cat burglars were supposed to be sneaky and nearly invisible. Most cat burglars don't wear spandex or carry a whip. Ah! Uh, I can't believe this! The witch! She's offering the disk to the highest bidder via internet auction! Batman smiles. What did you expect? She's a cat. Catwoman sets up a lot of trouble for a lot of people who are after the discs, sneaking away from the ensuing battle to make her own deal with the high bidder in secret. It is the same woman who secured Bane's services for her mysterious employer. They exchange packages, but she has laid a trap for Selina, who is nearly blinded when she opens her case. She whips out towards the sound of the woman's cocked gun and throws off her aim. The larger woman hauls Catwoman in and knocks her nearly out with one punch. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Selina lies at her feet, unable to move yet. Suddenly, bullets impact on the ground all around the two women. <laughs> Hardcase's ink have showed up to retrieve the discs on behalf of Bruce Wayne, and they open fire on the larger woman as Catwoman blindly stumbles around, trying to get her bearings. <laughs> Her nose tells her where the ripper is, but before she can escape, the large woman grazes her side with a bullet, <laughs> and Catwoman falls into the water. <laughs> the woman escapes in her car with her set of the discs, while Catwoman's fate is revealed in the next issue. She floats around for a bit and has a dream sequence, but finds her way back to shore just fine in the end. She won't try to make her delivery to Batman until part three, though. Homecoming. His name is Bane, and he has no problem whatsoever with delayed gratification. In fact, waiting is something he is well versed in. He's had a lot of practice, you see. Others, gazing as he is at Gotham, would see a city in ruins, all bridges, tunnels, and highway links to the outside severed. A once grand metropolis reduced to a bleeding urban ulcer, cut off and abandoned by the rest of the world. A prison. But that is not what Bane sees. What Bane sees is La Pina Duro in Santa Prisca, the prison in which he was born and raised. The place where his mother died. The last place he was loved. Home. But now he is through with his musings. Now he activates a remote. Choo. Now it is time for him to go home. Bane triggers a remote and an empty car carrier truck races towards the police barricade on the blasted bridge into Gotham. <clears throat> on the other side of the gap, the residents of No Man's Land crowd the bridge, offering a warm welcome to any would-be visitors. The cops open fire on the truck and its tires, but to no effect. They are forced to dive out of the way as the truck nears the bridge's end, and it screeches to a halt at the edge. <laughs> the cops open the door of the truck, but find it empty with only a radio-controlled device attached to the gas pedal. On the other side of the bridge, the residents grow suspicious and send for reinforcements. Yo, somebody else has crashed on the bridge! He's not going anywhere with that car carrier blocking the way. Oh yeah? It doesn't look like this guy is stopping. Bane drives his van towards the gap at top speed. <clears throat> the marshal is absolutely correct. Bane has no intention of stopping at all. Go for the tires again! Try to stop this sick puppy before he trashes himself! <laughs> the van nears the carrier truck. Holy! It was a setup! Hmm? He put that car carrier there to act as a ramp! Bane's van rides the truck as a ramp and flies out over the gap. <laughs> Bane is oblivious to the bullets and the shouting. Bane is too busy remembering. He remembers another prison, a bleak pile in Gotham Harbor known as Blackgate. He remembers a prisoner known as Axel who tried to assert his dominance over Bane by thrashing him in the laundry room. <laughs> but it was Axel who got thrashed. 
Who am I? You are being the king. Yes, I was the king. And I will be the king again. The van crunches down on the other side of the bridge. <laughs> what the hey? Must be some bad trick. Bane backs his van up to the edge of this side of the bridge. The residents crowd around it just as the police discover who is inside over the radio and what else he has stolen. The residents open up the van, also finding it empty. Bane has slipped out the back doors and is climbing under the bridge hand over hand towards Gotham. All too late, the residents also find out what else Bane stole when they see the lit dynamite underneath the van. which explodes in their faces. Nearby, at a charity home, Batman pays a visit to a nun he met on a previous case in disguise. When he hears the explosion, he vanishes, leaving his coat and hat behind. Mr. Fladermouse? But of course, the wino is no longer there to hear Sister Agnes. He has shed his ragged mufti to reveal his fighting togs, the cape and cowl of the Dark Knight. Batman arrives at the scene of the explosion. It was B Bane. He went down into the tower pier. Bane. Once he's loose in this lawless place, he's going to be unstoppable. He chases after Bane down into the sewers. Hmm. The niter phosphorescing on the slime is undisturbed in front of me. That means... Batman turns, but Bane catches him with a punch as he does. <laughs> The police can do nothing but observe the burning wreck from across the bridge gap. I knew you would still be here, Batman. Your precious city has fallen into the long night, and the dark is your element. Bane knocks Batman into the water, scattering the rats. <laughs> I prowl the night because that is where the evil lurks, Bane. I think you're in denial, Batman. You like the darkness. You thrive on evil. Bane tries to stomp on him, but Batman catches his foot. <laughs> You're the one in denial. You're the one who thinks he's innocent. He throws Bane off of him into a wall. <laughs> because you think a horrific child and excuses your adult transgressions. Batman rises and kicks Bane in the stomach, crumbling the wall behind him. <laughs> transgressions? Is it wrong for me to want my birthright? Bane strikes back, punching Batman away. <clears throat> Your rule of law took away my freedom before I was born. There is no transgression involved in reclaiming what is already mine. Bane throws a lit stick of dynamite into a sewer tunnel. <clears throat> Water rushes out from the new hole, and Batman is washed away. <clears throat> he climbs up out of the sewer. <clears throat> Sister Agnes... Did you see? A brute of a man in a mask? He crawled out of that other manhole and went into the old prop warehouse. Batman finds Bane waiting on a gigantic record player. You chose a strange place for a showdown, Bane. This venue is more appropriate to the Joker. The joke is on you, Batman. I broke you once, and I can break you again. I am here to be king. This is my destiny. You can't stop me, so you might as well just go away and leave me alone. Not a chance, Bane. I'm stopping you, here and now. You can't stop me, Batman. I am going to win because I am king, and I am right. Batman ducks Bane's punch. <sighs> and I am innocent. He tackles Bane into a huge blue ox. <laughs> You're wrong for pursuing me and persecuting me. Bane smashes Batman into a wall of crates. <sighs> I was in the throes of venom. It owned me and empowered me, but I won out over it. If I can beat venom, I can beat you. Bane hits Batman with a haymaker. <sighs> I will beat you. He slams Batman's head into the ground. <sighs> Wrong! Batman kicks Bane off of him. 
You may have licked Venom, but it was Venom that gave you your superhuman strength. Without it, you're just a loser mook like all the rest. You're just another mook who's going down. No, I don't think so. In fact, you are going to let me walk right out of here. I don't think so. Batman nails Bane with a three-punch combo to the head. <laughs> yes, you are. Because given the ethical choice, you will always make the correct decision. And right now, you have only two choices. To continue this battle and gamble on the outcome. Or defuse the dynamite bomb I planted in the sewer beneath that nun's soup kitchen. Hmm. Batman runs back towards the nun's kitchen. You have about twenty seconds. Maybe less. Probably more like ten. Ah, a beautiful day to start anew. A gang of thugs accost Bane. Hey, brag face, you're trespassing on our turf. Yeah, who do you think you are? And where do you think you are? He turns to face them. I'm the king here. And I'm home. End. Eleven forty-five p.m. Batgirl watches a gang of punks being held off by a gas station owner. You might as well crawl up now, Sanchez. This is jet territory. Ooh, I'm shaking. She spent her whole life in war zones. This is just one more. I'll take on all you punks. Come on. Oh yeah. Come on. Who the people are, what they shout about, the territory they battle over may be different. But one thing never changes. The owner swings his club into the punk with the knife's leg. Ah! Violence. Another thug with a chain knocks the gas station owner down. Ah! The language of force and fists. Luckily, it is her first language. As the punk wraps the chain around the man's neck, Batgirl steps out and calls to them. You got a big mouth, Sanchez. Why don't you open it up and I'll stop? I cover the waterfront. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they aren't impressed. Get a load of this. It's Little Orphan Ninja. Hey, kid, you know Halloween is still three months away. <laughs> they have underestimated her. Good. That will make it easy. Batgirl crouches, preparing to spring at them. He? Oh, shit! She leaps forward and jump kicks in the air, startling them into dropping their weapons. <sighs> they are thrown off balance, confused. She can feel it. And it feels good. Before she lands, Batgirl double chops the chain punk in the neck, <laughs> bouncing off his back to kick another one in the face. <sighs> <sighs> The air whistling around her. The crunch as the blow connects. Their fear. She lands before a punk with a club and slams her palm into his chin. <laughs> she likes it. Batgirl grabs the final thug's trachea and freezes. <laughs> she likes it too much. Stop. Stop now. <sighs> the punks get up and run away. The message has been delivered. The territory is hers. Yeah, yeah. Who's laughing now, you bumps? Hardy har har. Who's laughing now? Up yours, Sanchez. We'll be back. Sanchez takes Batgirl inside. Oracle's clock tower, 12.15 a.m. She's taken the gas station. Good, we move. No, Joker's forces just took the west side. There's too much activity in the Northeast Corridor. What? How many hours does the hospital unit have left on the generator? Another six. Eight if they cut the exterior lights. Cut them. You're going to let her hang there? It's too dangerous to send forces through now, and not worth the risk. We move at dawn. It'll be a long night for the girl. Yes, it will. But she can do the job. That's why I gave it to her. 
He sounds so sure. Not like earlier. 8.35 p.m. Any more information on that thing we spoke about? Ha! Huh. You had to ask for gasoline, didn't you? It doesn't look good. We have stringers negotiating with our usual connections, but so far nothing. Gas is tapped out from here to Midtown. In twelve hours, we run out of fuel for the emergency generator that powers the MASH unit. Look, I'm trying, but have you thought of any... Huh? Cassandra grabs Batman's cape. She was so eager. Yes, Batgirl, what is it? So eager to please. Cassandra points on the map. She knows where the gas is. Amusement mile. It's a war zone between here and there. I can't send her up there alone. Of course. She used to be one of my stringers uptown. She must know someone. She's just a kid. She knows that area blindfolded. She can get the gas. So eager to please him. Okay. Cassandra pumps her fist in the air. Go up there, secure the area, and give us your location. Wait for my call. We'll come out and retrieve the gas. Do not leave the target area. And do not, under any circumstances, let anyone die. Understood? Cassandra smiled with excitement. Wanting so badly to be useful. Wanting to prove herself. I was there once. I know what it feels like. Who knows what war zones she's been through. Who knows what goes through her mind at all. 2.39 a.m. Those kids. I've known them for years. Ever since they were kids. Jimmy and his friends used to come in here and try to boost stuff. Potato chips, lighters, small stuff, just for kicks. I told them, you'll never get anywhere with that attitude. Crime doesn't pay. You gotta grow up, take some responsibility, become a contributing member of society. Society? What the heck did I know? Then this happens, and the small-time boosters go big time. They stake out territory, get connections, and start trading stuff up. Suddenly the petty criminals are the only game in town. You want to survive? You play. I was lucky. This station was like sitting on a gold mine. I could trade with anybody. Gas, batteries, lighter fluid, beef jerky, beer. I was the king of the hill. For a while. Then they got brave. Three months, four months, five months go by. The stuff runs out. They know I'm holding the stash of my own, saving it. And they figure, why trade with the old man? Huh? When they can just off him and keep the whole sweet deal for themselves. Vicious little punks. They got no respect. They never figured I knew where to get a better deal. Eh? Batgirl has disappeared. He was making too much noise. Batgirl throws a line and climbs up a fire escape to a rooftop. Besides, she is restless and needs to get a sense of the territory. Learn its sounds, its smells, its rhythm. The places where it is fortified and where it is vulnerable. Make it hers. She's done what was asked, secured the area, and now he will come and get the gas. He said he'd come. Where is he? Somewhere out there she knows they are planning their next move. And one thing is for sure. They will not underestimate her again. Huh? Voices coming from... Batgirl sees the punks down on the ground. Okay, Django, you want to play? Here's what we do. She can't hear them, but she can see that they are sloppy and disorganized. However, they have some kind of rocket launcher. Somebody has connections in Chinatown, and that means gunpowder. No telling how much. What now? She considers attacking. No. Wait. They're moving. Follow. Batgirl descends the building. You who? Hey, Sanchez! I got something out here for you and your girlfriend! Sanchez charges outside with a club. Why, you rotten little son of a two-time! 3.55 a.m. The punks threaten Sanchez with a rocket launcher, but he stands his ground. Their leader sends someone to siphon the gas, but as he does, Batgirl appears in the shadows behind them and Sanchez grins. Batgirl leaps out and jump kicks the thug with the rocket. 
She cups his hands behind him, all the while kicking and punching the others away behind her back. Get up! Batgirl turns and knocks the leader's teeth out with a palm strike. Batgirl faces their best fighter, Django, armed with a broken bottle. Oh yeah, girl. Come on over here. Django will take care of you. When I get done with you, girlfriend, you're gonna need to wear a mask. She easily dodges his clumsy swipes. Get her! Yeah, Django! He's out of shape. And a smoker. He should tire out quickly enough. Yeah, yeah. get it! What are you waiting for, Johnny? The can! Get the can! Johnny runs for the pump with the gas can. <gasps> Batgirl lashes out with a kick, putting Django down. <laughs> Wait a minute, the kid. What's he... They all find out that the gas pump is empty. Huh? huh? Why? Where's the gas, Sanchez? Isn't any. Hasn't been for about three weeks now. Bull! You got a stash somewhere. Where is it? I'm telling you, there's no gas. You're telling me lies now, Sanchez. Where's the gas? If you shoot that thing, you'll never know, will you? Is that it? Is that the way you want to play? Fine. You hold out on the jets, you go to hell. The leader aims the rocket launcher at the station. No. Oh man, Jimmy, you can't, what are you? No, it can't end like this. The old man, the gas station, the infirmary, everything she fought to defend, everything they trusted her with. As the rocket fires, Batgirl dives, tackling Sanchez out of the way. <laughs> 4.15 a.m. She covers him in her cape while the gas station explodes in a huge fireball. <laughs> lost. She lost the territory. Why? Batgirl rises and charges at the punks. <laughs> she hits the leader with a jump kick to the face and she socks him in the gut. <laughs> that was for the gas station. <laughs> And that was for the medical unit, endangering the kid's life. And this is for... Batgirl is about to stomp on the gang leader when Sanchez calls to her. Batgirl, stop! I know what you're thinking, girl, but look at what you're doing. Stop for a second and look! Look! You think you failed. You lost everything. You think none of this makes any sense. You're angry, and you want to take it out on this guy's hide. You figure you've got nothing left to lose. You're wrong. If you stop that guy, you lose the most important thing of all. And that's the thing that separates you from him. You lose your principles. When the gas ran out here, I thought of going away. Giving those animals their territory. After all, I thought, what do I have to lose? The gas is gone. What do I have to fight for? And then I realized. It wasn't about the gas. It was the principle of the thing. So, I stayed. I washed the windows and I hung the sign out every day. And I made the gas station my last little corner of civilization. Because in the middle of all this madness, it was going to stand for something. You still have that choice. You don't have to do this. Don't let them drag you down to their level. You can care about doing what's right. Or you can stop caring and turn into another animal. Do you understand what I'm saying? She puts her foot down. She understands. Batman finally arrives. You followed orders. Good job, soldier. Hey, kid, come here. Jimmy was right. I think you learned some today, don't you? Yeah? All right, you don't talk. There's something I want you to have. There was a stash hidden in a locked broom closet in the hot dog stand down the street. Sanchez hands Batgirl a full gas can. I think you deserve this, and I think you'll do what's right with it. Because you care. There was enough fuel there to keep the generator going for another two weeks. The injured were taken back to the mass unit to be treated. Time passed. Broken bones healed. But some things 
will never be the same. Batgirl stands proudly beside Batman, her first mission a success. End. In her medical area, Dr. Leslie Tompkins, who helped Alfred raise Bruce after the death of his parents, is surrounded by the hurt and needy. Help me, Dr. Tompkins! Help my baby! Leslie! Leslie! I think I'm so dying! So hungry, Doc! So cold! Need food! Medicine! Shelter! She opens her doctor's bag, but sees that it is empty. You promised us, Leslie. You promised the clinic would always be here for us. A large, dark shape approaches her from behind. The monster! He's back! Get away from him! He wants her! You're not safe here, Leslie. Please, just let me do my work. Let me al Just as it reaches her. Leslie wakes up. Oh! The nightmare was exactly the same last night, and yet not quite so frightening. Because last night I woke to the same cold, and the same hunger, and the same fear that no man's land is carving away at my moral resolve. She puts on her coat and goes outside of her trailer. But, at least last night, the monster was further away. Leslie looks towards the remorseless killer she has tied to a bench, with his broken legs set in a splint. Spiritual Currency this is Mr. Zaz, one of my new No Man's Land patients. He's a pure sociopath, cuts a new hatch mark into his skin every time he murders someone. Before Gotham City was abandoned, he was kept in Blackgate Prison in a metal restraining box in a locked, padded room. To society, a threat of the highest order. Ah, <sighs> I knew that No Man's Land would challenge my resources as a doctor. But more and more, I find it trying to permeate who I am as a person. I used to say that as long as some had more than they needed and many had far less, my work was cut out for me. Now, here, no one has anything. We are equal in our poverty, and the work goes on ceaselessly. Leslie goes out to a dark alley on the edge of her area. Stop your caterwauling and face me! Killer Croc emerges from the shadows and asks Leslie about his friend, Stumpy. Stumpy is Croc's only remaining friend, the only one who can make him laugh, and Croc brought him here after he was attacked by the killer, Zaz. Croc knows that Zaz is there too, and he hits some trash cans as he threatens to come in and kill him. <laughs> but Leslie tells him she tolerates no violence in her area. At least for now, Croc respects her rules, and he calms down. I'm sorry, Doc. I'll come back at... <laughs> Just then, a bullet impacts near his scaly feet. Petit stands nearby, his gun still smoking. Step away from the doctor, freak! Killer Croc runs away into the darkness. Good thing we showed up when we did. Just in time to save Gotham's last doctor standing. Hope the rescue earns us a little medical attention. Huntress helps his wounded soldiers enter the medical area. No need to thank me, ma'am. Frankly, I would have shot that mutant for less than a... First of all, Officer Petit, I lost my best friend and his wife to gunfire. And if you and your men have any intention of stepping into my clinic, you'll damn well do so without weapons. Secondly, Wayland's been hovering near the clinic for days, watching over an injured friend. In his frustration, he occasionally feels the need to play out scenes of grief and vengeance with me. But ultimately, he has more respect for this place than you do. All right, Miss Tompkins, let's try this again. We're coming off another battle where we've been fighting to take the streets back for people like you. I'll disarm my injured, and you'll take him into your little free zone there. And meanwhile, me and whatever strong men can still stand are going to stay out here and lay a trap for that scaly homicidal maniac you've been coddling. Did commission- All right, boys, move in. We got ourselves a gator to fry. We get him now, and that's one less wacko to clean up in the final showdown. What makes me think Commissioner Gordon didn't approve your latest strike? And you. I know better than to try and argue a bat disciple out of their utility belt. 
but I hope I can count on you to... Ah! Leslie and Huntress rush towards the screen. Get him off of me! Help! Zaz has dug a fingernail into Mikey's arm, drawing blood. Oh, dear God! Mikey, get away from him! But I... But... Huntress shoots his wrist, and he lets go. <laughs> Ain't he still asleep? Shh, shh, let me see your wrist. He would have killed me! Absolutely. Zaz is a killing machine. He's unstoppable. Leslie bandages Mikey's cut. Damn it, you got the artery. Leslie, what are you thinking harboring a man like Zaz? It's not just that he has killed. Zaz lives to kill. That's all he does. He will absolutely, without question, kill again. Probably everybody in here. What is it with you civilian do-gooders? Social charity work does not mean granting monsters refuge. I'm afraid that it does, Huntress. I'm afraid sometimes that's exactly what it means. You distinguish between good and bad lawbreakers. I distinguish only between those who have and those who need. You've made a commitment to vengeance, though you'd like to call it justice, presumably in response to personal tragedy. It gives your life meaning, doesn't it? A purpose. A shape. Well, the covenants I've made are to doctoring and to pacifism. For decades, running this clinic has allowed me to... Pacifism? You're healing Zaz on grounds of pacifism? How so? Because having Zaz here is like knowingly standing in the path of a moving bullet? Huntress, may I tell you a secret? A secret? Anger and aggression stem from fear don't they? But fear of what? We become hostile when we're trying to protect ourselves. But here's the secret. What we're trying to protect is the soft, warm, compassionate, vulnerable place in ourselves. It's because you are open to the world and can be deeply touched that you strive to shield your heart in the first place. I choose to try to remain open I choose to move always on the side of good. Will my commitment to medical and spiritual healing lead others to recognize the tenderness in their violence? I don't know. But I have made a choice. Fine, turn the other cheek. But don't tell me you wouldn't raise a hand in self-defense. Don't tell me you'd just stand there and die. If it came to that, that's exactly what I'd do. Right. Well, I guess it's easy to think so, when the truth is that you've got Gotham's Dark Knight watching your back. Batman protects you, too? As Huntress is leaving, she meets Batgirl, who holds up her fist. Batgirl. Hmm. Your version of hello, I guess. Whatever. Speak of the devil. Huntress bumps her on purpose as she passes by. <laughs> she almost runs into Batman. Planning on shoving me out of your way, too? Uh, according to the good doctor there, you're mad at me because you care so deeply. My monster. A little hard on her, weren't you? She knows why. We lost six innocents to Two-Face, partly due to her negligence. We brought some supplies, gas for the generators, and a few pints of O-negative. He frightens me more than anyone else I know. Batman hands Leslie a wrapped package. Thank you so much. This will prove invaluable. I know it couldn't have been easy to get. No, it wasn't. Because he moves me more than anyone else I know. Well now, you must be the new proselyte I've heard so much about. Welcome. Don't mind the fist. That's how she says hello. You remember me, Batman? You saved my life by bringing me here when I got shot by the Black Maskers. I just wanted to let you know I'm doing lots better, and I even helped Dr. Leslie out around here now. What happened to your wrist? Oh, I, uh, I just got a little too close to... Zaz? This is his work. How? Leslie, are you out of your mind? Batman quickly locates Zaz and begins tying him up further. Batman, no! Zaz is unconscious. He can't heal like that. All the blood will drain from his extremities. He needs an infusion as is. He needs a what? This is what I went through hell for? To save that monster? 
You will not use the blood I just brought you on him. Yes, I will. And if you don't like it, you'll have to physically stop me. Let me make this clear. If he doesn't get that blood within the next couple of hours, he will die. Don't tell me this federal no-man's land is making a killer out of you. <sighs> Suddenly, gunshots ring out. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie storms off towards the sound. Damn it, Petite! Batgirl gives Batman a concerned look. Hmm? Go. She points at a mother and child, then at Leslie and Batman. No, she's not my mother. But she's been like a mother to me for most of my life. And usually, she understands. Leslie finds Huntress and Petite struggling over his gun. Almost had him, damn you! Trust me, you don't want to shoot anybody here. Not now. Why? What's so different about now? I'm different. I've had enough. Croc calls down from inside a building. I ain't gonna be the only one respecting the fighting band of the hospital zone. If none of you are, hell with it. I'll rip this place apart to finish off Zaz. Well, thanks a lot. What, so he just gotta show up and you're falling all over yourself again to please him? I have a patient to check on. Batman and Leslie walk away. I'm not on his side, but I think you should reconsider shooting up our only medical clinic. Leslie tends to Zaz, removing Batman's ropes. Leslie? Leslie, for your own protection. No! Zaz is undeviating in his bloodthirst. I know you have a lot of experience with danger, but not like this. You have to give me something better than the Hippocratic Oath this time. Fine. How about my concern for my soul? How about my consideration of the world we live in and my part in it? You're not the only one of the belief system you know. I am grateful every day for what you do for this city. But I do not approve of the way you do it. You're childish and stubborn in your anger. And now more than ever I fear that I've taught you nothing. I fear that, that I may sink to your level instead of raising you to mine. Bruce. I didn't mean... Hmm. Batman walks away. What I meant to say, he scares me. I'm scared. What's so brave about gunning down an unarmed man? Stay here. Protect the doctor and her clinic with your life. Batgirl touches Batman's shoulder. What? What is it? She draws lines down her face. Am I... What? What is that? Angry? I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're asking. Just watch Leslie. Batman turns away and does not see Batgirl draw a tear falling from her eye. Zaz wakes up and is on his feet at once. Where am I? Mikey, run! No! Zaz backhands Mikey, who hits his head falling and is knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie cowers before Zaz, alone. Not saying I don't trust you, Petite, but... <laughs> that girl hears the sound and rushes back. Great, where's she going? Huntress follows her. Gimme that. You boys stay out here and watch for the gator. Sounds like that subtle maniac in there is on his feet. Billy, behind you. Killer Croc shoves Petite. <laughs> no, Zaz is mine. Batgirl and Huntress race towards Leslie and Zaz. It takes every ounce of my concentration to fight past the fear, just enough to speak. You certainly have the power to do away with me, Zaz. And I will not resist that by doing harm in return. Batgirl grabs Huntress's wrist, telling her to stop, out of sight. I try to concentrate on my breath, and can't help suddenly dreading the loss of it. I do want you to consider, though, that ending my life ends the possibility of the medical care that I give to others, including you. I try to block out everything but awareness of my core, of Zaz's core, but I'm immediately distracted by the sound of violence erupting everywhere around us, like a fire that needs only the suggestion of tinder to spread. Huntress misinterprets and strikes Batgirl. 
Get off my equip, you little psycho. <clears throat> that hurt. Don't you touch me. Huntress grabs her Batgirl, but she ducks. <clears throat> Stay still, damn you. Huntress responds by tackling her. <clears throat> <clears throat> Meanwhile, Petite wrestles with Killer Croc. Rip your head off! Make boots out of you, Scaly! Buddy, do something! Don't shoot! You'll hit Petite! Get him, Billy! Teach him a lesson! He gets on top and punches Croc. <clears throat> but Croc bites into his arm. <clears throat> I search my soul for water. You're still very weak, Zaz. I can help make you better. I'll make do. Very well. If I cannot interest you in my aid, then perhaps I can interest you in a challenge. Murder is all about feeling for you. Fine, then. Feel me. Leslie places her hand on his chest. Feel, for one second, compassion. Or at the very least, feel the loss of my compassion, my attention towards you. Huntress and Batgirl stop fighting and notice Leslie. Huh? <gasps> What a brave soul you are. How inspiring to see someone act out their true nature. My true nature is to kill. So, perhaps you should say your prayers now, old woman. Zaz advances on her. I won't. I won't resist you with violence. Leslie falls to the ground and curls into a defensive ball. Suddenly, I don't know which I'm more ashamed of. The fear that paralyzes me, seizing my thoughts and my ability to act, wishing only that the torment of suspense would end, or the fear that spurs me on towards action, fanning thoughts of rage and uproar, wishing my enemy harm, wishing someone would just finally kill this son of a... Huh? Suddenly, Zaz is yanked away. Big mistake, Zaz. Killer Croc hurls him into a tent. Stumpy was my friend. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Chasing him into a hospital zone? What's the matter with me? At least I'm trying to take one of them down. What the hell have you been doing? I recognized the thought, and I acknowledged the thought. But I did not act on the thought, and I'm trying to let that be enough. The girl offers me the bow of a warrior. The fist represents the ever-present ability to inflict harm, while the straight hand shields it, respectfully promising not to. Batgirl helps Leslie up. Here, for now, it has to be enough. Please, no more fighting. We're all so scared, but we're okay. Why are you so... Angry. You stopped him. Not permanently, but for a minute. You stopped him. Croc and Zaz struggle together. <laughs> this ends now. Batman leaps down from above with a large concrete tube. He slams it down over Zaz, trapping his arms. <laughs> Croc runs away. Now, once again... Nothing can touch him. Likewise, the countless victims he's slain. Where will you take him now? Nightwing will have Blackgate under control in 26 hours. Damn, Reptile must be in the sewers by now. Batman leads Zaz away. Wait. Leslie hugs him. What was that for? I didn't save you. Croc did. I just want you to know... I would have preferred to lose my life than to be the cause of you committing violence. But I was so glad to see you. I'm always so glad to see you. Bruce smiles. Leslie is back with the needy when a dark shape approaches as in her dream. The monster! Oh! Batman kneels before her. Bruce! I'm sorry it's so violent. I'm sorry. No need. I've said this many times, and no man's land does not change it. You keep working towards peace in this city, and I'll keep working towards peace in your heart. 
deal? Batman and Batgirl wait with Zaz under a roof that gives no shelter from the rain. Deal. End. Going Downtown, Part 1, The Vault Two men with guns and a woman armed with knives face off against an opponent. Back off, Bessie. You're outnumbered, amigo. You, you, you can't kill us all. No, not all. Bane grabs one of the men by the head as the others try to run. <gasps> ah! He soon throws both of the men's broken bodies behind him. <laughs> I need one of you alive, but only one. I am Bane. I know who you are. You used to run, Gotham. Used to. Bane corners the woman, and she pulls her knife. Do not try my patience. Bane grabs her hand, and she drops it. Ouch! You mean nothing to me. Your sex did not spare you. What did spare me, Vato? You offered the least threat. Huh. Follow me. What's that? Be quiet, or I will find another volunteer. He operates a remote. Bane leads the woman through a secret passage, forcing her to go first to spring any traps. She passes a skeleton with a spear through it, and then a gun is triggered, but luckily it is empty. At the bottom of the stairs, he opens a vault. Bane retrieves a massive gun. Cheeto! If only the Manos knew about this, the hell they could have raised. They would have spent it in pointless carnage. And what are you going to do with it? I will spend it in meaningful carnage. You going to start a war? I'm going to end one. Meanwhile, Batman hands a reluctant man an axe. Do it. Aw. Now. The man smashes apart his barrels. Just brewing up some gin, making people happy. Making people blind. I'm stopping you before you make someone dead. You build another still, and I'll know about it. Find another line of work. Yup, I'll do that. We're down to this? Something has to break. Something big. This mysterious outsider? I don't see it. Gotham is too ripe a prize, even in its current isolation. I've seen the signs. Someone from outside is making things happen in the city. While walking down the street, Bane is stopped by another gang of thugs. Yo, too tall. You think you can just cruise through here? There's a toll. What is the price of this toll? Everything you got. And then some. Bane unloads on them with his new gun and cuts down all of the men in a hail of bullets. You're crazy! What are you doing? I am multiplying my efforts. I am spreading the terror. He drops playing cards at the scene. The cards begin to collect on the penguin's desk. What are these? Is that blood? Disgusting. Uh, people are bringing them in from all over. Somebody's capping players and marking their kills. All over? Can you be more specific? Coming from the west side through Lowboy, Bandito, and Demon's Turf. The cards are all the two of spades. It's Two-Face, Penguin. Gotta be. Well, I meant to think it is. Someone's baiting and switching, boys. Someone else is looking at the big picture. And they're looking to shift the balance of power. And in this town... That will be child's play. <laughs> Two-Face awakens to the sound of a gun battle on his front doorstep. Harvey and his men hold off attackers from other gangs who have found the playing cards with their dead and blame Two-Face. Multiple gangs show up outside Harvey's house, discuss their reasons, and quickly decide to team up against him for the moment. Soon, a small army begins to form. A chain of children pass a call for Batman among themselves on the streets. Eventually, one of them attracts him, and Batman swoops down to a small boy. <sighs> what is it? Whoa! You really are real! Make it fast, son. The p penguin he wants to see you. I've been told. On your way, son. The kids run off. Do you think it's a trap? 
This would have been the trap. And what if it was? Sometimes you have to make yourself a target to find the hunter. This is Cobblepot, not your outsider. But the penguin is calling on me. Imagine what would cause him to do that. Something's about to break. Fane speaks on a cell phone. All goes as planned. This is a fine game we play, Bane. It is a game lost or won in the details. I know what is at stake. I know what needs to be done. Keep me informed. We will speak again when I have achieved your directive. That your boss? I allow him that illusion. It suits me. For now. But the prize I win. I win for Bane. Harvey laughs in the face of danger, quite literally, as the attacking gangs begin to fire flaming arrows in through his windows, setting the place on fire. He tells them to bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't need to make an entrance every time. Batman and Robin step over the Penguin's guards. I know you enjoy a bit of theater, Oswald. You wanted to talk? Talk. A very strident young thing, aren't we? Get on with it. Somebody is setting up Harvey Dent. They've hit gang turfs and neutral zones, leaving his mark. They start here in the west and move toward his zone. They follow a pattern leading to a batarang sticks in the map. Oh my. Show off. It was me. Whoever's doing this, and I'm not eliminating you as a suspect, is drawing the fight away from his target. They're aiming every gangbanger to Dent's fortress at City Hall and forcing him to consolidate his forces in defense there and away from this sector. And smart as well, my dear boy. But to what end is all this chicanery? Who benefits? They're clearing the way for something. But I'm not sure what. We'll check it out ourselves. Don't bother to see us out, Oswald. What's that, Essie? The library? It is the Hall of Records. It holds all of this city's ugly memories and minor details. No money in there? It is full of treasures more valuable than money. Bane scopes out the building with binoculars, seeing two guards. Apparently, Signor Dent shares my opinion. So you gonna rob that place? I am going to level it. No stone shall stand upon another. Going Downtown, Part 2, The Vandal. Harvey yells into a radio. What is it? I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> Bullets impact the guards, cover in a line. <laughs> this is Tango over at the Hall of Records. Somebody's attacking the place. Who? Is it the Bat? Not him. It's... Bane stands across from them, firing his enormous gun. <laughs> you crazy, Bane? Two-Face owns Gotham. A temporary situation only. No ammo. That mean we get out of here, Essay? You stay here. Do not make me hunt for you. You and me, babe. Bane drops the gun and goes ahead with his hands full of grenades. Please let him get killed. Please let him get killed. Please let him get killed. The grenades rain down on the guards. Oh, man. <laughs> Batman and Robin watch Bane make his entrance, his assistant dragging his crate behind him. I'm coming. I'm coming. Saddle up. We're out of here. Maybe you ain't noticed, boss, but we are seriously surrounded. The gangs attempt to lay siege to Two-Face with a ladder to his window. Kill, Kill Two-Face! Two -Face. Kill, Kill Two-Face! Two -Face. Try it, you maggots! Try it! Harvey guns them all down as they enter. <laughs> we can get in through that skylight and ambush him. You tell me where you want me and... No. Huh? We leave Bane alone. But that's the Hall of Records. It's Gotham's archives. Who knows what he's up to? Why are we standing back? I'll give you two reasons. More guards wait in the Hall of Records to ambush Bane. This place is a library? Of a sort. But it is more than that. It is a repository of this city's history. Every exchange, every transaction and deal is documented here. From the grand to minute, all is stored in these moldering bins and sagging shelves. Cool. So what are you going to do with it? Destroy it. Bane draws a pistol and shoots the guards before they can attack. Madrazo! 
The Allied gangs have dragged Harvey out of his building and tied him to a chair. They are preparing to hang him from a streetlight. Harvey dead. You have been charged with the murder of your brothers and the trespassing on our turfs and being an all-around pig. How do you plead? Guilty as charged. Hang him! him! Order in the street. Shut up! The gang's de facto leader holds up a scarred coin. Let's let chance decide. Hmm. Works for me. Flip the coin. Here's the deal, Dent. Heads we win, tails you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey watches it flip into the air. The coin comes back down. Suddenly, a batarang knocks the coin out of the air. <laughs> Batman leaps into the thugs, kicking one into the others. <laughs> Case dismissed. Funny situation, huh? What? Uh, Harvey looks up and sees Robin perched above him. You! How's it feel at the other end of the rope, Harv? Get me out of this chair, brat! Give me two good reasons why I should. Batman leaps through the air using batarangs to control the crowd. <laughs> Robin, cut him loose. Robin hangs down to cut Harvey free. Hold still. Batman punches out one of the thugs while Robin works. <laughs> All right. Dent, drop the hammer on Dent. The gangs rush towards Two-Face while Batman tries to keep them at bay. Kill him. Hang him. Double time, you little son of a... Language. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Records, Bane unloads the contents of his crate, a set of low-yield nuclear devices. You know what you're doing, Bane? I read a lot. About nukes? And history. Rome did more than level the cities of her enemies. It salted the earth so that nothing could grow there. I will reduce Gotham City's memories to ashes and poison the ground beneath them. How much time we got, I say? Ten minutes. Batman and the thugs fight over the column supporting Harvey. <laughs> swing, Two-Face, swing! Just as the support is taken out, Robin frees his hand, and Dent hangs on to the rope around his neck. Hang tough, Harv! <laughs> Robin cuts him loose, and Harvey falls to the ground. And watch that first step! <laughs> <laughs> he soon gets up and runs away. <laughs> He's getting away. That was the plan. Batman and Robin keep the gangs busy. <coughs> Bane and his helper run away from the Hall of Records. And what's the next part? I'm working on that. They run faster. <gasps> Bane and the woman are thrown through the air as the devices explode deep underground. <coughs> <coughs> the wave of concussive force also knocks Batman and Robin off their feet and scatters the rest of the gang. Ah. Furniture is broken as far away as Penguin's lair. Huh? And even Oracle's clock tower and the GCPD are shaken by it. Ah. Even further away, Batgirl feels it. Bane and his helper emerge from the rubble. <laughs> the destruction is total. The end game begins. Ah. Well now, Vato. Nothing. You are free to go. That's it? One last request. Bear witness. Tell everyone what you saw tonight. No hay una problema, Senor Bane. Robin checks the area with a Geiger counter. <laughs> Nothing to get in a panic about. Background radiation is a scooch higher than normal. But I'll bet it's hot inside. Gordon can restrict access when he takes this area. I know one reason we had to let Bane have his way was because we had to save Two-Face's life, but you said there was a second reason. Bane had no reason to destroy the city's records, but someone did. And I have a feeling they're about to step into the light. End. Before we move on to the final set of stories covered in this part, I'd like to highlight some other things that happened in this same time period, but which were removed to form a clearer main story. In power play, Mr. Freeze had taken over the power plant Superman had gotten running, but Batman was forced to shut it down. Mr. Freeze was set adrift on an ice floe, but he showed up again in Robin's three-part story, War Beneath the Streets, and Robin ended a conflict between Freeze and the Ratcatcher for control of Gotham's sewers. 
Batman helped the Ninja Girl keep Gotham's Chinatown under control in Low Road to Golden Mountain, and Harley Quinn used dating techniques from a book to make the Joker jealous in The Code, flirting with a henchman whom the Joker then murdered to win her back. Underground Railroad saw Bach learning how to be a local hero and take care of his neighborhood, and Ballistic Romance follows Dick through his recovery at Barbara's place and tries to push a love triangle with Huntress while all three fight off an attack on the clock tower by Batiste's gang of ex-Blue Boys. There are many stories like these happening all through the event, but they don't all matter to the overarching narrative. They're more there to add depth and color to the world. And sail to the number sheets, of course. Captain of Industry a man in a Gotham Knights ball cap opens a lockbox filled with cash and jewelry. Here you got a way out. All of this is yours if you can make that happen. Is this all that you have, Flowers? This stuff is just junk in Gotham, but if you got a way out... I don't know. Please, I thought I could stand it here. I can't. Hmm. Not for the rest of my life. I gotta get out of Gotham. Please. Tears spill down the man's cheeks. Well, if you're gonna cry about it... Okay, Flowers, you got a deal. I can go? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Show the man to the exit, guys. Right. Two guards lead him to a locked metal door. This is it? Service tunnel for the railroad. It's old. The feds forgot about it. They'll bring you up in Chalfont on the other side of the river. Don't I need a flashlight or something? You won't get lost. Bon voyage. Say hello to the world for us. They open the door and throw the man down the stairs. Who? Dark. Which way do I go? Somebody there? Is somebody... The man trips over a skeleton. Oh, man. Ghoulish people emerge from the darkness all around him. Pale, skinny, dressed in rags, and carrying crude weapons. <laughs> oh, man! So you sent another sucker down the glory hole, Shank? This one paid large, Delphine. And he's out of Gotham, so he can't complain. Not so anyone can hear, anyway. It really amazes me, all the great stuff that got left behind. People left all kinds of goodies here. But it's worthless. If it's not food or fuel or clothing, it has no value in Gotham. Shank picks up a string of pearls. Like these? Can't eat these, can you, Delphine? They won't keep you warm. Oh, my. But you still want them. The market's down on stuff like this, but it's not always gonna be like that. They can't keep Gotham locked away forever. Some feel-good pinhead's gonna make them open this asylum again. And then, I'm sitting on a fortune, and I take my business legitimate. What business is that, Shank? Selling people their dreams. Shank kisses her. You win. Here's your cocoa bar. Told you that guy'd never make it back to the door. Batman corners an informant on a rooftop. Danny Flowers. Where is he? Nobody's seen him. He skipped. His partner takes position above Batman with a crossbow. Skipped? He left Gotham. That's impossible. That's what I heard. Somebody's got a way out. Oh, it's true. You know more than you're telling. I don't. As he gets Batman in his sights, Batgirl jumps on his weapon. <laughs> and she kicks him in the face. <laughs> Want to revise your last statement? Well. Soon they are both tied up. Guy named Shank, hooked up with the Phantoms. Word is he got a way out of this hellhole. Sounds like something I should look into. I can trust you not to go running to him. You can trust me. I said you can trust me. I know. So untie me. If I do, I can't trust you anymore. Aw. Eventually, the blue boys find them. Looks like that temple's right, lol. Two for the price of one, Harp. At Phantom's trading post, a woman exchanges a ring worth 20 grand for a jar of peanut butter. She has little choice, though, as Phantom is the only trader in town taking what used to be considered valuable and people have to eat. Bruce approaches in disguise as matches Malone his criminal identity and drops a huge wad of cash while asking about a way out of no man's land. Shank asks for his gold and ivory inlaid handgun as well, saying he won't need it on the outside. 
Bruce has led to the metal door. He'll come up in Chalfont. He used to go there when I was a kid. It ain't changed much. Why don't Shank and you guys go through? It's cool here for now. Shank got long-range plans. I'll raise a tall, cold one to you guys. Sure you will. Heh. <laughs> the guards shove him down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce finds the skeletons and the Gotham Knight's ball cap. The ghoulish people surround him. I can help you. I can get you out of here. <sighs> Meat. Meat. They dogpile Bruce in a starved frenzy. Meat. Meat. He plants his back against the wall and strikes back, chopping and elbowing a few away before springing off the wall and kicking the mass of people over. <laughs> he runs deeper into the tunnel, past more skeletons, and they give chase. Shank proudly shows Delphine his kingdom, one square block converted into farmland and worked by virtual slaves guarded by men with guns. He tells Delphine he'll own even more when the city reopens and she can stand by his side. Meanwhile, in the tunnel, Bruce leaps over a chasm and throws gas bombs behind himself. The ghouls are undeterred and pile into him against a railing. <laughs> The railing gives way, and Bruce falls into the chasm. <laughs> While Phantom lies passed out on his bed, Delphine snoops around his room until she finds the combination to his safe. In the tunnel below, the people look over the edge of the chasm, then jump back with alarm. <laughs> Batman flies high into the air before them, his cape outstretched, and they run away in fear. <sighs> A monster! <laughs> Wait! I can help you. Shank wakes up when his alarm goes off. What's that, boss? The ball, you pinheads! Delphine freezes with a string of pearls in her hand. You have done it now, girl. Shank's gonna wring your neck. Delphine stops and watches as the handle is melted off the metal door, and it begins to open. <laughs> Shank and his guards come up behind her. Hey, sugar. What's got you so frightened? Him! Batman emerges from the door. The Batman, huh? Well, he dies just like anyone. Shank tries to use the gun he got from Matches Malone, but it explodes in his hand. Ha! <laughs> Batman tackles them all in one motion. <laughs> <laughs> he finishes them off with an elbow and a kick. <laughs> <laughs> the trapped people finally come up into the light. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! No! You're free now. Just as I promised. No more killing. It's over. You're free. They fall to their knees in relief. <laughs> they're... They're crying. What's left of the human part of them is. Soon, Gordon and the Blue Boys move in to clean up. They traded everything they owned for a trip into darkness. They're some of the worst this city has to offer. But I'm still not sure they deserve this. Imagine all that time down there waiting for another victim. Another fool like themselves. I sold them their dreams. They wanted out. I showed them out. Don't feel sorry for them. They know what you cops don't. Less yap and more walk it, loser. They know. They know what it takes to survive. Delphine crawls through the marketplace, holding her pearls out to anyone who will take them. I need something to eat. Will you trade for something to eat? Aren't these worth a loaf of bread? A can of fruit? Aren't these worth anything? But everyone just passes her by. End. Stormy weather. Superman flies into Gotham past the military barricade, moving too fast to be seen. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Miller to Stark. We're on no man's land perimeter sick, calling to report a wind. Uh, no, gale force. Blast? You know what? I'd go with gust. It was definitely kind of a gust. Hmm. Cancel that, Stark. Just a little change in the weather. He speeds through Gotham's ruined streets. <sighs> Superman flies all around Gotham, making a quick patrol to survey the city before stopping near a shattered phone booth. Hmm. 
flying into it and moving at super speed, Superman changes into Clark Kent. In his ragged clothing meant to blend in, Clark walks out into the city. Batman sees him arrive and keeps watch from a high window. Clark stops at a nearby garden and uses his X-ray vision to peer into the soil. Hmm, hey! He reaches in and pulls out a few seeds, just as he had discovered. Hey now, you just leave that garden alone. You might need to try some scarification with this okra, sir. I pre-soaked him overnight. Batman continues to watch Clark from high windows. How long ago did you plant? About three months. Mm-hmm. This cold snap can't be helping, but even so, you should be seeing some sprouting by now. You a farmer or some? Yes, sir. At least, my pa is. I work in Metropolis now, but I still know my way around a garden. Name's Cl Cal. James Wendell. They shake hands. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Wendell. Clark gently makes small cuts in the seeds with a knife. Now, you want to be careful not to nick the inner embryo. We're just trying to help the seed break out of this coating here when it's ready to germinate. This should help them absorb water a little more easily, too. Ain't no water to absorb. Cold snaps holding off the rain. Dry spell, huh? Don't usually matter much in the city, but we ran out of stored water months ago. They both look up at the clouds. Yeah, that's a shame. You've even got low-level cumulonimbus. Problem is, we ain't got no warm air currents to ease the rain out those clouds. Hit us hardest at the community garden. We've been trying everything over there. Black radish, patty pan, ginger beans, squash, even peanuts. Maybe you could come take a look? It's over by the police station. But still, we'd want to get there and back before dark. Clark and Mr. Wendell walked down the street. So what kept you in Gotham, Mr. Wendell? Didn't you think about getting out before they closed it off? Mrs. Wendell, Gloria's got a bad hip. Can't travel. Besides which, where are we supposed to go? We've worked hard all our lives for that apartment. Politics are always changing. But your home is your home. You don't leave unless it's destroyed. You know what I mean? Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Wendell. We'll want to get there and back before dark now. Clark goes to a doorstep to check on a girl lying under a blanket. Miss? Miss, are you all right? Stay back! You try anything with me and Batman will come beat you to a pulp, man! I'm sure he will. You believe? I do. Well, this is Blue Boy territory anyway, so mostly what you see is cops. But I've heard stories about the Bat people, and I believe. Anyway, you need to go now. I'm on stakeout. Stakeout? Uh, yeah, I work for the Orc. Shh, someone's coming. I don't hear any. Petite and his gang of heavily armed ex-blue boys soon fill the street. The girl tugs on Clark's sleeve. Those aren't blue boys. Little late to be wandering around now, isn't it? Don't know no law saying I can't go where I please. Excuse me, officer. Is there a problem here? Depends. If you call being stuck in a god government forsaken urban hellhole after dark with no one but a spineless police commissioner and a bunch of creepy metal cases dressed in bat suits for protection a problem, then yeah, I'd say we got ourselves a little one. Fortunately, I'd also say there's a solution. And what would that be? Mutiny. Independent Sentinel. Private sector militia. In other words, vigilantes without the altruism. What about you? You look pretty fit. Know how to shoot a gun? I thought ammo was hard to come by here. It is, but ex-officer Petit here was crazy enough to have a mono private stash sitting around even before we became a no man's land. A bullet for every man, woman, and child in Gotham. Is that how it goes, Petit? I may have said something like that, but these days my big quota is if you're not with us, you're against us. We've got no use for old men or children, but you, I could use. Petit puts his gun to Clark's head. What do you say? He says forget it, traitor! The girl shoulder checks Petit. <clears throat> As he falls down the stairs, he flips his safety off. <sighs> the other men grab Clark as he fires, but he is able to use a quick burst of heat vision to melt the bullet before it hits the girl. <clears throat> Clark notices a batarang in the air. The batarang knocks a man's gun away. He lets the men punch him and bring him down. Ooh. Jeez, I think I broke my hand. Guy's got a jaw like steel. Oh, uh. Don't bother. 
Batman hands Clark back his glasses. Thanks. He leaps between Petite's men, punching two of them at once. <laughs> it's him. The bat! Retreat! Retreat! They scatter as he takes down another one. <laughs> Batman helps Mr. Wendell up. You all right? I... Yes. Do you have a home to go back to? I'm on my way. Clark kneels by the girl. It's okay now. You're safe. Get away from me! Leave me alone! I won't hurt you. What's your name? I don't have to tell you nothing! You messed up my whole report! You're... I told you I was on stakeout, you idiot! Word is the Penguin's looking to start up some kind of pipeline from outside, and I'm recon for this sector! Or like, was! Now I'll be lucky if... if... Huh. I'll take care of Penguin. Tomorrow, you'll tell Oracle the Petite's boys are still on the move. Tonight you seek shelter with that gentleman. Clark gives her a look that says I wouldn't argue with him. But I... Go. The girl runs off after Mr. Wendell. Clark sees Batgirl fly by overhead. So you're not working alone. I have all the assistance I need. Glad to hear it. Your boys are here too? Hmm. What can I do for you, Clark? You can show me the community garden if you've got time. I think I'm safe to be seen with. Went out of my way to make sure I wouldn't stand out too much. How'd I do? Batman looks Clark over. Hmm. The toes of your shoes are scuffed, but you forgot to scuff the heels. Your shirt is dirty, but bears no evidence of sweat or epidermal oil. Secretion stains. And no one around here has smelled like deodorant soap or laundry detergent for over five months. <laughs> and if I asked someone who wasn't the world's greatest detective? You look fine. Why are you here? Mostly because I got a tip that the techno-terrorist group Locus is still trying to make Gotham its private lab, possibly with an aerial germ assault by small remote drone craft. Mostly? Hm. <laughs> Only you would stop on the word mostly in a sentence that contained aerial germ assault and drone craft, Bruce. Anyway, listen. I hear Gotham's been having a dry spell. Only you would come to no man's land to talk about the weather, Clark. Clark looks up as Batman flips infrared lenses into place. He sees Clark using his vision powers. I suppose there's no point in asking you to lighten up? I suppose not. See anything up there? Nothing I can't handle. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Superman and Batman both rush off to handle jobs meant for them. <sighs> they quickly return to the street. Sorry about that. We're more alike than you'd care to admit, Bruce. I'll take you to the garden, but it ends there. This is a war zone, and I progress with strategy. I have to be at least five moves ahead of my enemies, with five contingency plans and five backup plans for those contingencies at all times. I appreciate that we may have similar goals, but we are not alike, Clark. A variable like Superman throws off everything. I thought I made all this clear the last time you visited. But I've never visited before. Excuse me? Not me, Bruce. Not Clark. I've learned a lot in the past few months. A lot about myself. You mean when you tried to take over the entire world? You're lucky I haven't seen that kryptonite sample you gave me since the earthquake. That's a joke, right? That's got to be a joke. You were saying... I was saying that I came back to Gotham to check up on Locust, but also to walk among the people to really try to understand what happened here and what will help. I understand that an external quick fix won't heal this city, and I understand that some problems can't be solved from the stratosphere. And I've also come to understand that I can't do everything by myself. So you wanted to make sure that I've learned the same lesson? Bruce, I have all the faith in the world that you'll take care of Gotham. I just wanted to make sure you're taking care of yourself. <laughs> I have a good team in place, Clark. Thank you for your concern. They arrive at the community garden and Clark inspects the crops. You're sure there's nothing you need right now? Besides rain, that is? I have everything under control. Okay, well, then if you don't need me, others do. I'll see you soon. Good luck with everything. Clark and Bruce shake hands.
Clark flies up at super speed, changing to Superman as he goes. Up, up, and away. Soon, it begins to rain. A small smile touches the corner of Batman's lips. <clears throat> End. The tallyman ignores calls from Rene Montoya's little brother as he retrieves Rene from Two-Face's cells. It's time, pretty lady. The coin came down bad, little kidlins. And now Two-Face wants his girlfriend's company again. No! Leave her alone! Jurisprudence Part 1 She is led to Two-Face, sitting at a table set with a sumptuous dinner. Here she is, boss. Good. Get out. I always think, don't think. Leave her brother alone. Have a seat. The food's amazing. Gotta tell you, Renee, your ma, she knows how to cook. And your dad? That man's a wizard. That's all I gotta say. My parents? Had him here all along. What's the matter? You didn't think I'd offed him, did you? Mama? Papa? Easy, officer. Easy. You can see them in a minute. First, sit with me. You've got to be starving. Have a bite of your ma's pasteles. It's great stuff. I'm not hungry. What is it this time? Maybe I just wanted the pleasure of your company? Sure. Coin came up heads, did it? There are some decisions I don't need fate to decide. But you're right. I want you to do something. No. Which is what I thought you'd say. But you and I both know you'll do what I want. For Papa. And Mama. And Benny. We understand each other, don't we, Renee? Yes. I've got to run a couple of errands. You should eat. Then see your parents. There's fresh water, too. Bathe while I'm gone, then put this on. I expect to see you wearing it when I get back. Benny. I want food brought to Benny. Of course. I haven't let any of you starve yet, have I? After three months, I'd think you'd trust me by now, Rene. I do. Half the time. Late at night, Harvey invades Gordon's home, luring out and choking the guard at his door. <coughs> Once inside, he radios the tally man, and his men attack Gordon's gate. <coughs> Jim and Sarah awake with a start. Huh? huh? Harvey shoves open Gordon's bedroom door. <coughs> Commissioner James Gordon! I am a warrant for your arrest. You have the right to remain silent. He punches Jim in the head. <clears throat> Sarah rushes him with a club, and he beats her unconscious. If you give up this right, <clears throat> anything you say can be used against you <clears throat> in a <clears throat> court of law. <clears throat> Sarah! I think you know the rest, Jimmy. Sarah, you monster! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save it for the judge. Dent takes Jim away in handcuffs. There are about twenty of them. We're going out the back. Give us cover, and then turn the boys loose. I've only got six bullets left, boss. Do what I tell you! Two-Face leaves with Gordon. <sighs> this is just getting worse and worse. Batman and Robin surveil the Penguin, taking a secret meeting with the same woman who works for Bane's employer and who betrayed Selina for the computer disks. She's on the move. Let her go. Oracle's tracking her. Do we move in? Thirty seconds. Walk in heels, you know. That's a dying off. Indeed. Pardon me. One of Penguin's goons inspects something under a large cover. Murray, you lift that top, I'll peck your eyes out. What about me? Okay, this isn't pecking, per se, but I get your drift. Robin springs out and jump kicks one of the hoods. <laughs> Grab him! Stomp him! Mash! Penguin raises his umbrella, but it is grabbed by Batman behind him. Oh, dear. He tosses it away. So, Oswald, who is she? My dear fellow, I simply have no idea what... <laughs> Which way to the egress? Penguin turns to run, but Robin pops up before him. Uh, why can't you two get a day job? I'll ask it again. Who is she? Batman, please, I think you'd agree that my business is my own. Don't you? The case Finster gave her. I know what was inside it, Oswald. I know she's your pipeline out. 
Now I want to know what she's bringing in, and why. I want to know who she is, and I'm losing my patience. She won't give her name. I don't know who she works for, but she's moving in. Robin removes the tarp. A cement mixer? Yes, and about 150 tons more of building supplies. Whoever she is, they're planning on some major urban renewal. Batman, come in! Batman! Oracle? It's the Blue Boys! My dad! They're under attack! All throughout Dry Corner! It's Two-Face! Batman and Robin make a quick exit. Think I've just been upstaged. Renee is reunited with her parents, and they assure her they've been well taken care of since Harvey found them, lost to Renee in No Man's Land several months ago. Her father is upset they've been kept prisoner, but her mother is glad they've been safe and well fed. She tells Renee that she can tell Harvey likes her as she helps her get dressed in a court bailiff's uniform, as Two-Face has ordered. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm dressed, if that's what you mean. We're going to be gone for a while, Mr. and Mrs. Montoya. I'll have someone bring you back down to your room. So, you mean? <laughs> Mr. Montoya, you are a kick. Ready, Renee? Harvey and Renee leave. You look really nice. Thanks. My favorite courtroom. Judge Halsey used to preside here, remember? Halsey was before my time. Right, right. I forget how young you are. Harvey, what are we doing here? I used to love the law. We're going to have a trial, Renee. What, just the two of us? No, that would be pointless. We need a defendant, after all. Two-Face lays his coin and his gun down on a table. Bailiff, please bring in the defendant. Renee opens the door to find Gordon still handcuffed. Commissioner! Commissioner! Jim! Are you... Never better. Bailiff, please help the defendant to his seat. No! No, I won't do this! I won't help you! Bailiff, help the defendant to his seat, or I'll hold you in contempt. Two-Face picks up his gun, and Renee reluctantly obeys. Good. Bailiff, take your assigned position, please. All rise. Court is now in session. In the matter of the people versus James Gordon, the charges are breach of contract, negligent homicide, multiple counts, and dereliction of duty. A plea of not guilty having been entered by the defense, I have set a trial date for... Now, the defendant shall note, if found guilty, the sentence will be death. Death to him, to his family, and to all those under his protection. The prosecution calls its first witness. Gotham City Police Detective 3rd Class, Renee Montoya. Jurisprudence, Part 2 Order in the court. You gonna shoot me, Harvey? Is that what this is? A kangaroo court? Your verdict already in? This is an honest court, Jimmy boy. You're gonna get a fair trial. And then you'll kill me. And my wife and my men. You've broken the law. Your law. Guilt must be punished. And what about innocence? If he's found innocent, what happens then, Harvey? He's free. His sector, his wife, his people, all free. Not enough. You let me go, and my parents, and my brother. Renee. And you turn yourself in. I'm on trial, too. You know what you've done. Hmm. So be it. Court is now in session. Batman and Robin watch Gordon's house with binoculars, where the tally man and Two-Face's gang remain on guard. Count eight of them. Hostages? Two, maybe more. Essen and another cop. Gordon? I haven't seen him. They could be keeping him out of sight. Batman can see the tally man holding a gun to Sarah's head. Hmm. Contact Oracle. Tell her to get the others here. Now. Two-Face questions Renee on the stand. Detective Montoya, could you describe your relationship with James Gordon? Oh, for crying out. Answer the question. He's my boss. My... Boss? Friend. He's my... Friend? Objection. Good call, Jimmy. 
then flips his coin. It lands scarred side up. Overruled. I'll ask again. Please tell the court what the defendant asked you to do on day 190 of No Man's Land. Damn it, Harvey, you know. Answer the question, Detective Montoya. He told me to talk to you. Why? He wanted your help. You disapproved of this? Yes. Why? Because you're a murderer and you're crazy, that's why. Answer without editorializing, if you please, Detective. <sighs> because we're cops. You're a criminal. Working with you is morally and ethically wrong. It is, in fact, illegal. Yes. Why did he send you to talk to me and no other cop? He knew. He knew that you and I had met before No Man's Land was declared. That you let me keep that coin. Was that the only reason? No. He didn't want... He didn't want anyone else to know that he was dealing with you. Did you want to talk to me, Detective? Answer the question, please. No. Why not? You scare me. But you brought his message anyway, correct? Yes. Why? I couldn't say no. Objection! Objection! This is totally irrelevant! Overruled! You used your influence to force Detective Montoya to act as your courier. You engaged her in secret, Jimmy. You used your own detective, a woman who was loyal to you, who respected and trusted you to further your own conspiracy. Gordon jumps at Harvey. You saw it! Silence in the court. He puts his gun to Jim's head. Ugh. I never forced her to do anything. Detective, you may step down. The court thanks you for your testimony. The people call Commissioner James Gordon. I'm going to warn you at the outset that you are under oath. I know how to give testimony, you sanctimonious... Are you acquainted with the criminal known as Two-Face? Looking right at him. How long have you known him? Answer, please. As Two-Face? I've known you almost nine years. Could you list for the court the number of times he's been taken into custody and for what crimes? Where are you going with this, Harvey? Answer, please, Commissioner. Twenty times. Maybe more. Four? Name it. Everything from murder to larceny. There's no doubt in your mind, then, that Two-Face is a criminal. None. Would you consider him dangerous? Wait a minute. Yes or no? Yes. So why would you have entered into a mutual defense agreement with him, Commissioner Gordon? You know why. You had the men and the muscle. I couldn't protect my people or what's left of this city without your help. You've done it in the past. Batman was your sanctioned. Don't talk to me about him. Hit a nerve, did I? You want to play games with me? Fine, Harvey. Don't expect me to like it. Is it true you entered into a mutual defense agreement with Two-Face? One where he would assist you if you assisted him? Mm, that's correct. And you broke that agreement. Is that also correct? Yes. What happened as a result? You kidnapped Renee. And how long has Two-Face held her captive? You, four, no, five months. Five months. That's a long time. That's a very long time. Harvey tenderly kisses Renee on the forehead. Huh? <sighs> you can't blame me for your own actions. You can't blame me for what you did to Renee. Order. I can and do, Commissioner. You were responsible for her care, her well-being. You were responsible for the people of this city. You set events in motion, Commissioner. You abused your office, your power, your command. Two-Face points his gun right between Jim's eyes. You broke your agreement with Two-Face. You refused aid to Two-Face when he called upon you, when he begged for your help while under attack. How many men died because you refused to honor your agreement? As a result of your actions, Detective Rene Montoya was taken as compensation, held prisoner for months. You're guilty as sin, James Gordon, and you know it. The prosecution rests. He holds up his coin. I don't think we need this to determine the verdict, do we? Guilty. Sentence to be carried out in- No, wait! What about his defense? He's entitled to a defense. 
no defense. No one to speak for it. I'll speak in my own defense. <laughs> you? I don't think so, Jimmy. You're not a lawyer. I'd have to declare a mistrial. Then I'll defend him. Same problem, detective. You can't do this, Harvey. You told me you loved the law. You can't pervert it like this. No one can speak for him, Renee. Don't you understand? You can. I want Harvey Dent to defend me. Dent? For the defense? You have to, Harvey. You're the only one who can defend him. Dent prepares to flip his coin. <coughs> Everyone watches the coin rise and fall. <coughs> Harvey catches it and looks at the result. Huh? <sighs> Commissioner, you may step down. The defense calls its first and only witness. Two-Face. Did you? You miserable, self-righteous, arrogant papa, sir. I'll have to ask. Or what? You'll do what, you worthless? Permission to treat as a hostile witness, your honor. And who do you think you're talking to, you stupid? Thank you. Two-Face, did you approach James Gordon on day 124 of the federal no-man's land? Don't you remember? You were there. Did you offer him anything in exchange for your help? We entered into an agreement, and you know it. Were terms set? No, no terms were... What happened next? Oh, you remember, don't you? We killed. We laid out the bodies of the Zosha and the Wreckers and let the Blue Boys just... Did Gordon ask for your help? What? Of course not. He's a wimp like you. Another wimp. As a result of the murders you committed, the GCPD gained significant territory? You know it. In essence, you blackmailed Gordon. The implication herein being that the murders were committed at his request. Right. But they weren't. You took it upon yourself to. Let's see if I can remember how you put it. Serve justice? No! Oh! So any contract Gordon entered into with you was under duress, and therefore void. No! 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 He did it! He's guilty and you can't! You can't! You can't! Ah! <sighs> Two-Face sits on the stand with his head in his hands, defeated. Go. I'll wait here. I won't abandon you again. You didn't abandon me the first time, sir. Renee unlocks Jim's cups. Go. Find out if your wife and Harvey and the others are still alive. You'll be okay here? I'll be fine. Go. Defense. Rest. Not. Guilty. Acquitted. It's my fault. Harvey lays down his gun and his coin. Rene? Right here. Case. It was a weak case. He holds out his hands. You've got to say it. Rene cuffs him. Ch -ch -ch. You're under arrest. Rene, don't forget to read me my rights. I won't, Harvey. Rene leads Two Face away. Jim rushes home. Sarah? 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 Where are. Jim? Sarah throws herself into his arm. Ugh, was so scared. Thought he'd killed you. What happened, Sarah? The cavalry arrived. Petite? I thought he'd had enough of us. Not petite, Jim. Gordon sees Batman, Robin, Azrael, and Batgirl with the Blue Boys. They saved me. They saved us. Hmm. Jim. All right. Let's talk. The end. Robin and Oracle wait in her clock tower. Been three hours already. Uh-huh. How... How do you think it's going? You mean, with them? Yeah. Oracle sips her coffee. Hmm. Yeah. Kinda what I figured. And, after the earth shattered and the buildings crumbled, the nation abandoned Gotham City. Then, only the valiant, the venal, and the insane remain in the place they called No Man's Land. Falling back, Batman and Jim Gordon face off across a burning barrel in his rooftop garden, now filled with lush greenery. Batman glowers silently in the shadows as Jim rubs his neck by the fire. 
Eh. Eventually, he sits on the bench, looking at Batman. Batman comes into the warmth and light of the fire, looking at the empty spot next to Jim, but he does not sit beside him. Hmm. Unauthorized access attempted. Department of Justice has been notified of this intrusion. Damn it! Don't you dare! So help me if you crash, I'll... Oracle smacks her monitor. Want I should take a crack at it? Maybe I can hack my way in. Thank you, no. I can do this. So you keep saying. How many hours you been at this? Hmm. You're a cute kid. Real cute kid. All that construction material you and Batman discovered, somebody paid for it. I'm going to find out who, and when I know who, I'll know why. Hmm. Okay, that's better. Robin, log on over there, would you? See if you can hack into the Bloodhaven Port Authority. Robin? Hey, it'll be okay. Feels like my parents are having a fight, you know? And we're upstairs waiting to find out if the divorce is final. It'll be okay. They need each other. They'll work it out. Batman inspects a rose. Your garden. You've done a fine job with it. We... There was an infestation late in the summer. Had to tear up most of the vegetable patch there. Jim points to a bare patch of dirt. Save the rest of the crop, though. That's good. Yeah. We got some nice carrots out of it. Tomatoes, too. Hmm. Jim takes off his glasses and rubs his nose. <sighs> Been a long, long year. Yes, Jim. Are we friends? Batman comes back into the light. Yes, Jim. We're friends. Damn odd. I don't have many friends. I don't have many people I trust. But I trusted you. Jim points at him accusingly. I trusted you. Gordon gets up and walks to the barrel. You saved my wife and protected my people. I'm grateful for that. Don't think that I'm not. But that's not enough. You say you're my friend, but I don't think you have friends. Batman turns away. When the NML was announced, Sarah and I tried to leave. A moment of weakness. I wanted to run away, find a job somewhere else, abandon the sinking ship. Everywhere I applied for work, I got turned down. I wasn't asking for much, not like I wanted to be commissioner of police in Keystone City. I'd have taken a detective job if I could have landed it. No one would give me work. They didn't want a cop who needed an urban legend to do his policing for him. They laughed at me, some of them behind my back, some to my face, and I started to wonder, maybe you were laughing at me too. Batman turns to him. No. Really? You use me. You've been using me for ten years. Or vice versa. Absolutely. Because I thought we wanted the same thing. I thought we wanted our city, this city, to be safe. That's what I thought. I thought we were in this together. Where the hell were you? Batman doesn't answer. That's why I don't believe we're friends. You don't respect me. You don't trust me. That whole fiasco a while back, when you vanished and I had to deal with that parade of pretenders, did you think I wouldn't notice that it wasn't you under that cowl? Did you think I was that stupid? No. You have your secrets. I've never pressed you for them. Maybe I should have, instead of letting you turn me into your... your... whatever it is you see me as. You're my partner. Don't blow smoke at me. It's true. It's what you'd like to think. That doesn't make it true. Partners are equals, Batman. When have you ever treated me like your equal? Partners, for example, tell you their plans. They keep you informed, Jim yells in Batman's face. And they sure as hell don't walk out on you in the middle of a sentence. Batman hangs his head. 
I've never been good at saying goodbye. Hmm. You're the best cop I've ever known. And I've known a lot of cops, Jim. There's no man or woman living that I respect more than you. But like you said, saying it isn't enough. The words don't mean anything. They don't fix the damage. Batman turns to Jim. Actions speak louder than words. And he pulls back his cowl. Bruce Wayne stands unmasked as the Batman, but Jim Gordon has turned away and shut his eyes. Jim. Put it. Put it back. Put it. It's the only thing I can give you other than my word. When the world abandoned Gotham, I had to find my reason again. My purpose. I need our partnership. We can save Gotham. We're so close, Jim. We can bring it back from the edge. This is the one thing I can give you. I don't want it, damn it! If I wanted to know who you were, I could have discovered it ten years ago. For all you know, maybe I did. Maybe I do. But that's not the point. Put it back on. Jim turns back and sees only Batman half hidden in the shadows. Hmm. You need my help, huh? You and your people. Figured it wouldn't be me alone. Then we should plan. Tomorrow at sunset? Here? Done. I'll be waiting. Have a good night, Commissioner. And you, Batman. Batman swings away into the night. <sighs> End of part two. There's only one more part to go, and part three will most likely be shorter and more focused than this section was. As once the word came in from editorial that the status quo was going to change, the endgame was rolled out rather quickly, relative to the easy pace of the rest of the long event. The writers were given nearly free reign to tell whatever stories they wanted against the backdrop of No Man's Land, while the editors kept the long-running subplots on track across the books. And should you choose to delve into them, there's a lot more good stuff to be found than what I've shaped into this comparatively concise narrative, focused mostly on Batman and Jim Gordon. In Part 3, the mysterious player behind the scenes making moves in Gotham will be revealed, and I'll bet many of you already know who it is. Petit and his men will have to be dealt with, as well as Bane calling an alliance of villains to order. Catwoman will return as well, finally making it back to Batman to complete her mission, and then deciding to go after the woman who shot her. And the Joker has something up his sleeve for the big climax as well. So just because Two-Face is off the board, don't think that Batman or Jim Gordon's troubles are over. In fact, they're going to need their partnership more than ever if Gotham is to be saved and restored to life in a way that benefits her people. See you all soon for Part 3, and a full all-in-one edition of this entire event will follow shortly after that. Until then, take care out there. And as always, thanks for watching.